let's begin. My lovely, lovely imps, today we are going to be talking about some drama. Now, many of you know that I do a series called Drama Mama. If you've never seen it, you should check it out. Go onto my channel, search Drama Mama, and you'll find it. This is not a Drama Mama, although I think you will enjoy my Drama Mamas. My Drama Mama videos are where I do a whole bunch of research and uh, I do a deep dive investigation into um, usually some sort of internet or pop culture blow up and I try to make sense for people who might not understand what the heck's going on. Recently, we've covered uh, the Miranda Singh situation. We've covered the Illuminati situation. But this, again, is not a drama mama. Today, it's just a drama stream. I am not doing any research for today. Uh, however, I am still going to hopefully be able to say something valuable to all of you. And hopefully we'll have a good time while doing it. Um, today we are going to be talking about debate bros versus video essayists, which is a very strange topic. I haven't talked about this thing in a really long time. However, despite me not talking about it, it has nonetheless been an issue that continually crops up. In this bubbling swamp that we call uh, the internet, there are various circles and clicks and spaces that people tend to gravitate towards. And a lot of them are very loosely defined. And uh, in those uh, uh, in those subgroups, there are also groups of friends, and there are people who associate with one another, people who collaborate with one another, and little clicks and stuff like that. And recently, and by recently, I mean like the last like year, mostly. It's been like a year, year and a half. There has been uh, probably longer than that that, 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 that the, the, the conflict has been bubbling up, but it's gotten really bad in the last year and a half. There has been this weird schism between video essayists and debate bros. And a lot of times it centers around a few key figures. Uh, two of those most commonly brought up are Vosh, who many of you may know. Uh, I am friends with Vosh in real life, but also I have also argued very, very publicly with Vosh. We have had a number of, let's just say, very intense public disagreements. Many of you are probably already familiar with that. So while I am friends with Vosh in real life, I have never hesitated, we have never hesitated from criticizing one another uh, when the time comes. Um, and also another person who has recently become a major fixation uh, in this conflict is Keffels. Um, Keffels is somebody I have known for a very long time. Uh, I have covered uh, and supported Keffels uh, in her uh, struggle uh, against a very severe campaign of online harassment that was mostly done uh, by a deranged hate forum, which resulted in uh, literal actual violence being done against Keffels. Um, and likewise, in the situation with Vosh, I have also been critical of a lot of uh, Keffels' positions while still being somebody who supports her uh, against the deranged behavior of people who have doxxed her, who have, attempt who have swatted her and attempted to swat her again, and all of that nonsense. Um, and increasingly, there is a sort of small clique of people who call themselves video essayists. Uh, sometimes they refer to themselves as bread tube, even though I don't actually think that's accurate at all. Um, and there has just been this schism between people who are, uh, who are sort of labeled to be associated with Vosh and people who are labeled um, to be uh, associated with bread to the, the self-identification or the video essayists. And there's this weird thing, because BreadTube in and of itself, some of you might not even know what BreadTube is. BreadTube is a term that originated on Reddit, if I'm not mistaken, and it referred to 
um, a whole bunch of generally left-leaning video essayists, of which there are many. It was never uh, a club. There was no organization. It was a consumer label. Basically, a bunch of people who watch video essayists said, hey, these people we like. And more and more and more people gained association with that consumer label via uh, an, an incomprehensible internet process of association. Some people who are sort of famously associated with BreadTube are ContraPoints, H Bomber Guy, um, uh, uh, Sean, formerly known as Sean and Jen. Um, uh, there's a ton. There's so many. Um, there's just there's uh, some people consider me a part of BreadTube. I've been referred to. I don't refer to myself as a part of BreadTube. I never have. But people have actually said that I'm a part of BreadTube, even though I don't even do video essays. I do stream content, and I do do edited segments, but I do everything I do is live and very off the cuff. Wait, it wasn't always just Sean? No. Uh, there's a ton of people who have been considered as a part of BreadTube, but the, the, the key thing to remember is that nobody gets to decide that they're a member of BreadTube or not. Um, and in fact, many of the creators who have been labeled as members of BreadTube have expressed frustration with being a, being sort of forcibly associated with a group that they didn't actually choose. And this is an, this actually has happened in another area as well, which is with the term debate bros. The term debate bro, um, and that one I have used for myself, ironically mostly, saying, yeah, I'm a debate bro, you know, because I used to do a lot of debates. When I first started streaming, I did a lot of debates. Um, however, and, I, and I've, never, I've never really resented being called a debate bro all that much, even though it's, there's a, we'll get into something a little weird about that when it comes to me specifically. Um, Debate bros is another one where a lot of people get labeled as debate bros, whether or not they self-identify that way. Um, it was used as an insult. Of course it was used as an insult at first, but some people sort of ironically, uh, um, you know, uh, absorbed it or, or wore it as armor or whatever. So people did that with BreadTube as well. It's this weird thing where there isn't actually like a debate bro organization or a bread tube organization or a video essayist organization. And nonetheless, a schism is referenced frequently. And most of the people who are viewing this show, when I say the debate bro versus video essayist um, schism, you know what I'm talking about simply by observing it in action. Lately, there has been a number of videos, um, mostly, I, would, I will say predominantly from the video essayist side of this whole thing, that attempt to talk about the issue, that attempt to um, explain it. And we've watched a couple of them here on this stream, and I haven't had very good opinions about most of them. Uh, in fact, most of the videos that, have, that I've watched on this stream that talk about debate bros or that attempt to narrativize the, the history of this conflict, I feel are very, very bad. They're very biased. They're, under, uh, they're, they're undersighted. They're weak as video essays, not just as general content. I find them to be not actually very accurate and generally very slanted. Um, and recently, there's been a, a new outcropping of this. There's been a another series of, vi of videos that have come out. Some of them I have refused to engage with because I simply thought that they were too baity. They were so very obviously like designed to try and bait um, reactions and whatever that I just didn't feel it was worthwhile to spend time on it. However, a video uh, has recently dropped that despite me literally being on a short a short hiatus, you could explain. I've been away for about a week, and uh, after I did a really long stream that had nothing to do with any of this, I've been binging TV and not spending much time online. I have nonetheless seen 
so much about this latest video. Um, it's wild. In fact, I, out of curiosity yesterday, I was thinking of streaming yesterday, but I actually um, decided uh, uh, not to stream yesterday in lieu of spending more time thinking about what I wanted to say on stream today. Um, and yesterday, as a, an experiment, I decided to go hang out on Twitter again. Uh, I don't spend a lot of time on Twitter anymore. I actively hate Twitter. Uh, I have deliberately made the decision to not spend much time on Twitter. Uh, I don't have it on my phone anymore. Um, but I changed that for one day. And I decided to just watch what was going on in the spaces that I follow. And I have a pretty, and I, and, and I know this is a bit of a long preamble, but I want you to bear with me here because there's a good reason for it, okay? Um, I am in a weird place when it comes to associations on the internet. Um, I was never welcomed in any way into any sort of debate bro sphere. I did debates, but as many of you who've been with me for a long time know, uh, I was actually hated in these debate spheres pretty severely and uh, to the degree that it actually ended up turning into years of harassment from spe specific very large figures that generally consider themselves in the deb debate sphere. Um, and I deliberately left the debate sphere because I hated it, because it was so toxic and so pathetic and such a waste of time and only harmed my career. And I'll say, since I've left the debate sphere, my channel has done nothing but grow. My channel is growing at a really great pace. Thank you all who support me. This show has been growing and growing and growing and it's doing fantastic. Um, uh, Annie says, you ended up basically being a heel for Hippy Dippy, which I was actually fine with. I was actually with fine with being a the far left heel character on Hippy Dippy, but it just got out of hand. Um, Hippy Dippy, uh, there's a lot I could talk about. I don't want to spend a whole bunch of time on the past, but the basic thing was the whole format changed and there was no actual, there was no dynamics going on. These weren't structured. It just became to the point where I was no longer, uh, like, a perce just being perceived as a heel. There were enormous communities that was convinced that I was actually an evil person and it got to the point where, um, every aspect of my life was being invaded. My personal life was being invaded by freaks on the internet who were convinced that I was some kind of a, uh, a villain, um, which is very, very weird. Very strange. Um, so, um, uh, what was I gonna say? Uh, yes, so, <clears throat> I find myself in a weird place online. I am mutuals with a lot of people in the uh, in 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 bread tube, generally, but I am also mutuals with a lot of people in the sort of video essayist space. Uh, even some people who are directly involved in the video that we are going to be watching and reacting to today. Um, and I am also at, like real life friends with a lot of people who are generally labeled as debate bros. Um, I, uh, I, am, I am real life friends with both Xander Hall and Vosh and Keffels. All of these are people that I know to some degree offline. Keffels I've never met in person, but we've known each other since before I was or since, not before I was a streamer, but since before Keffels was was like streaming. So I've known Keffels for a long time outside of these spaces. Um, which puts me in a very odd place when it comes to reacting and observing this stuff. And also, um, it also gives me a unique perspective. Uh, one of the things that I've talked about is how weird it is that despite the fact that I regularly defend the value of debate content and that I made a lot of debate content, that I got my start in this space doing debate content, that people never include me 
as a positive example, even people who are who I am friends with don't include me as like a positive example of a debate streamer. They actually completely ignore my body of work. Um, and I have found that somewhat offensive at times. Um, I, it, it's annoyed the shit out of me actually that basically people will talk about the debate and they will be very broad about it and they will basically delete me from existence as if I never did debates, as if I never did good debates, and as if I haven't made very, very popular videos discussing why I think the debate can be a valuable format. And I find that kind of weird. It's kind of odd, right, that a trans woman you know, is sort of excluded from the being included in the debate streamers. Now, some of them might just be uncomfortable using the term debate bro to label me, which I understand and I appreciate that to a certain degree. I don't want to be misgendered. But also, I find it odd at how specific the label of debate bro is. It's a very specific, it's, it's very specific and yet, in a lot of the videos that we've watched talking about this issue, there's no, there's, they're very broad. Ah, debate is bad because it does this. Debate streamers are bad because they do this. Debate is stupid. Why do you fucking care? Everyone who does debate is a grifter. And then they resort when confronted to sort of the, the debate bro. I was talking about the debate bro. I was talking about the debate bro. And then I'm like, well, hey, I did debates. I even confronted some of the debate bros, quote unquote, that you seem to have problems with. Why don't you ever mention me? I do remember when somebody included, we watched a video where Hassan Piker was included as a debate bro in order because it was convenient to a point, even though it's absurd to say that Hassan is a debate bro and Hassan has actually mocked debate streaming in the past, even though he's done debates. They've been far, uh, they've been far apart from one another. Anyway, it's a weird thing. I am also a big, big fan of video essays. I talk about this on my stream probably every single stream. At some point, do I mention that I'm a huge fan of video essays? Um, my favorite video essayist is probably Jacob Geller. Um, though I have huge appreciation um, for Jack Saint. I have huge appreciation for H Bomber Guy. I have huge appreciation for Sean's work. Um, uh, God, uh, there's so many people whose work, that I can't even list everybody here because of course I'm on the spot now. And But uh, Folding Ideas, oh my God. Uh, Folding Ideas is amazing. Lindsay Ellis, amazing. ContraPoints, incredible. Um, uh, uh, oh, oh, Big Joel, I've watched, I think I've watched every single Jack Saint and every single Big Joel video. Oh, Lemmy. There are so many, like I love, like video essays are one of my favorite things to dive into. So again, I find myself, I'll restate this again in this, you know, whole wind up. Uh, I find myself in a very, very weird position and I also find myself getting angrier and angrier um, about all this. Yeah, sorry, Punk Corpse. Uh, it's picking up my, my, my roommate is, is getting picked up by the increased gain. I'll try dropping the, uh, try dropping the gain a little bit. Sorry about that. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, hopefully the gain will still be strong enough to... I don't know. I don't know. Normally the audio doesn't get through as much, but <sighs> it's tedious seeing these videos every month. Um, um, what was I going to say? Now I've lost my train of thought. I'm sorry about that ADHD moment. Yes, yes, yes. Anyway, I found myself getting increasingly frustrated and this sort of peaked yesterday when I decided to spend some time on Twitter, just seeing what all these people who are mutuals with me a lot of these people are mutuals with me. I follow a lot of people on Twitter. It comes from a former era when I used to follow way less judiciously. Now I'm way more picky with my followbacks for a number of reasons. And the state of discourse was pathetic. It was frankly fucking stupid. 
Um, and not only is it fucking stupid, it's also just really manipulative. And I've seen people that I otherwise respect beginning to engage in a level of spite and pettiness um, that makes me lose respect for them. Um, I just, I find it really uh, tiring. And not only that, it just, it just makes me feel checked out about the uh about any desire to collaborate with most of the people uh that most of the larger not even larger figures a lot of figures in this space not even larger a lot, some of the larger figures are have sort of distanced themselves completely wisely might i note um it's just it's just really fucking weird and not only that but i find it sad um I'm gonna give an example of one such thing. Uh, and this is probably gonna make some people really mad. It might even make some of my friends mad, but if it makes you mad, maybe you need to hear it. This extremely weird obsession with finding any reason to label Keffels as racist, specifically fixating on a, uh, a game of telephone around a noodle cookbook is one of the most odious, boring, pathetic, idiotic, and petty things I have I've ever seen in my entire life. Now, I was there for all of this. I've seen all of this. Basically, what happened is some lady, some white lady, made a cookbook about noodles and dumplings. And some Asian lady... Uh, on Twitter said that they felt like it was cultural appropriation. And at some point, Keffel said that she didn't think there was anything wrong with a white lady making a noodles and dumplings cookbook. And that has now, through a game of telephone, become a piece of evidence that is used to sort of broadly say that Keffel's is racist. And I just think that's really fucking dumb. Okay? And I I can't help but feel like it's below the in intellect of all of the people who call themselves video essayists. All these people who otherwise tend to put a lot of effort into their stuff to continue perpetuating this to basically keep hammering this shit forward out of spite and pride and ego. And also, it has another effect, okay? Listen, it has a secondary effect, all right? Which is that now there is a, uh, there is a, like, counterculture, quote unquote, of people basically uh, making memes about noodles uh, to sort of ironically signal that they think it's stupid that somebody called Keffel's racist over noodles, over a noodle tweet, which is also, like, I, I get it. And I, I'm not as, I don't put these people on an equal playing field. But Jesus Christ, it does shit up your content feed, doesn't it? Don't you get fucking tired of it? Doesn't anybody get fucking tired of the back and forth about noodles? You're racist for a noodle tweet. And then somebody says, mmm, noodles. And it just goes back and forth like that forever in spaces that at the same time all of the people are sitting around going, yes, we are, we are politics appreciators. We appreciate politics. Yes, yes. We, we like to think about politics and we, like to, we want the world to be better and we're engaging in politics. It is. Man, it just, and you want to know what's worse? Hold on one more time. One more thing. You want to know where it really offends me? It doesn't even, it's not even, I'll be completely honest with you. It's not even the, the biggest offense. The part that offends me to the deepest part of my creative soul is not even the fact that, uh, that, it's so st that it's stupid and it's a waste of time for people who claim to be politically serious and who claim to talk about politically serious things. The part that offends me is that it's boring. It's bad fucking content. It's, 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 
a waste of everyone's talent and time. It is boring. And it, it all that it does, literally, all that it does is reinforce extremely siloed off cults of personality on every side. It just discourages everybody from talking about anything else. Look, I'm fucking doing it right now. But in my defense, I'm attempting to address the problem as a whole, as opposed to, uh, you know, just jumping on board and making a, yet another video about this shit. It's, it's an entertainment crime. It is a crime against you all. It's a crime against all of the viewers who deserve to be having more fun, who deserve to be laughing about things, or fuck, who deserve to at least be learning something or getting mad at a conservative or learning about uh, how conservatives do things and how we can counter them or whatever. There's literally anything, anything other than this fucking noodle back and forth. It's like, uh, it's content slurry. It's content sludge. It's pathetic. It's dumb. It's been going on for months and it's fucking stupid and I never want to see anything about it again. And it's making me lose respect for people. And it, it reeks of desperation, doesn't it? It really does. It's not growing. None of this is growing anybody's channels. It's just sort of preaching to the choir in a really pathetic way. And the worst thing again is like, at the end of the day, it's making a bunch of people behave even more embarrassingly than they should. The fact that this has been a conflict that is roiled up for as long about fucking noodles, and it is about noodles, I don't care. Those of you who are watching this who uh, think otherwise, I know that there's a bunch of people watching right now who are not in support of Keffels. I have I have 700 people watching right now. Um, and uh, and I know some of you are people who are, are not fans of Keffels, and I'm not asking you to be a fan of Keffels, but can you guys just acknowledge this is, this is a fucking game of telephone about the noodles crap, and you know it is. You know how much it's brought up, you know how much people use that as a justification. It's fucking, and even if you do mental gymnastics to try and say, oh, actually, it's, uh, it's, it's actually, well, it's because she keeps, you know, joking about it. That's what proves that she's actually racist because Keffel said noodles are tasty, which means she's mocking the people who have a serious, shut the fuck up. Are you, do you hear yourselves? Do you fucking hear yourselves for fuck's sake? It's pathetic. It's horrible. It's boring. And I, it's like, I want to move to another neighborhood. Because of all this crap. It's like if, uh, I don't know, it's like living next to fucking Spongebob and Patrick. Except if all that Spongebob and Patrick did was beat the shit out of each other every day over something that happened two years ago. But they were really loud about it all the time. And they pu kept putting it in your content feed. I don't want to, uh, I like the people. I like a lot of these people. I, I, I like their stuff. I like their mainline stuff. I hate this fucking shit. Anyway, this is a very, very long preamble to us reacting to a video that everybody has told me to react to, which is a video by a YouTuber by the name of Foreign Man in a Foreign Land. And I have seen a very small uh, bit of this video, um, but I actually haven't seen the whole thing. And I'm interested to see it. Because, um, because everybody has been talking about it. And I mean everybody's been fucking talking about it. Everybody in all of these spaces, the video essay spaces have all been talking about it. The, um, the, the, the debate spaces have all been talking about it. Obviously the normies haven't been. I've been enjoying my fucking life. I haven't talked about it at all until now. I've been watching The Sopranos. I binge watched The Righteous Gemstones. I've been enjoying myself playing some Diablo 4, working out a banger ass build that can shred enemies 10 levels above me. But everybody's been talking about this video. I mean, it went so far as I saw somebody make a, a like support thread 
that was like basically claiming that this video led to a harassment campaign and it was like in this t in these hard times s write down what you appreciate about foreign man in a foreign land who created this video so I don't know if there's been a harassment campaign. Maybe we'll find out. I haven't seen anything about that, but certainly everybody's been talking about this shit. Oh my God, so much. It's been going all over the place. And now I'm gonna be completely upfront with you. I have not watched Foreign Man in a Foreign Land's videos. Maybe that actually gives me an advantage here because I won't be, uh, biased by knowing what he's done in the past and I'll just be reacting to this video that's you know that's addressing this schism and it totally is addressing this schism all I know for a fact because I've seen it uploaded on my subscribe list I've seen all the debate people who get labeled debate bros reacting to this video and I've seen all of the video SAS people recommending this video so clearly everybody's talking about this video so I want to watch it, and I want to try and give it a fair shake from the position of somebody who is tired of this motherfucking stupid conflict. And I'm going to try and give it a fair shake, and we're going to see. Demon Mama says I won't be biased. I'm going to do my best. My bias is being tired of this conflict. My, my bias is thinking that this conflict is incredibly stupid, and that, um... And my one bias is thinking that boy oh boy have a lot of so-called video essayists spent a lot of time specifically sparking up this specific schism. And it seems to do very well in their circles. They seem to pitch it very well. Like like you do a video and and I mean look at look at this thing right here. It's got Vosh, it's got Keffels in the thumbnail, it's got contrapoints in the thumbnail. It's, it, it feels, it feels like there is a, a debate bro con condemnation industry where basically in a very small circle, you make a video to, that condemns the debate bros broadly and it, it, and, and everybody's going to promote the video. Maybe this video won't be like that. That's my bias. I'm putting all my cards out on the table. Okay? I'm putting all my cards on the table. And I acknowledge, by the way, I acknowledge up front um, that uh, clickbait happens. People do clickbait titles. People do clickbait thumbnails, and that's fine. This video could be totally different than that. I have only seen a very little bit of this video and certainly not enough to judge the video. But I'm going to react to it today. And then we're going to talk more about everything that I just spent this first like 30 minutes winding up to. But I think that my first 30 minutes were relatively valuable. I think I have a lot to say about this and a lot to share from my experience of observing all this crap. JJ Candelabra says, how do you feel about Jesse Gender calling Shark the sea slur constantly? Well, see, I don't think that Jesse has called Shark the sea slur constantly. In fact, if I remember correctly, Jesse Gender uh, liked a tweet that implied that uh, Shark was a character from uh, uh, from a uh, from Django Unchained, a, a house slave character from Django Unchained. I don't believe that Jesse actually said anything like that. However, I do think that that was an incredibly poor taste tweet. Um, I think it's a gross thing. And I also think it's ironic um, given just how hard Jesse Gender has gone on other people. I mean, I remember that Jesse Gender was on the train that said, uh, joined on to a pretty large degree in condemning people for using the say her name uh, hashtag saying that that was uh, racially insensitive. So I think it's somewhat ironic to engage in that type of memeing while also uh, uh, policing people uh, on racial insensitivity to that degree. I do think that that's a little bit um, 
I think that's gauche. And it does make me feel icky. I'll put that much, okay? Um, however, I, I also want to point out that the question that started this was completely inaccurate. To my knowledge, Jesse Gender has not gone, has not constantly called Shark the sea slur. Do you see what I'm talking about here? Do you see the spite, the pettiness, the dishonesty that makes everybody look like a fucking ass? Can we just, can we just fucking cool it for a little bit? All right, let's do the video. She's reported two videos that do call that. The, t the game of telephone goes from that to saying she calls Shark the Seasler constantly. Um, okay, let me talk about that then, because we're doing this. Um, people have mentioned that uh, Jesse Gender has promoted, if I'm not mistaken, two videos that are, uh, let's say, very harsh to Shark. And I also think that's a really weird thing to do. Um, some of you know that I refrained from reacting to that drama because one, I felt like it was um, particularly uh, personal and weird um, and it didn't involve me. And the only thing I commented on in that, in, in that, with that last video was the fact that I didn't like that I was being, that my face was used as if it supported the message against Shark. And I don't support what people said about Shark. I don't think it was fair. I don't, I don't think that it's fair. And I don't know uh, enough about about how the C slur is used to know how problematic it is. I think it's uh, I think it to me it seems from the outside like uh, like a pretty harsh thing to say to somebody. And I think it's um, undue on Shark. I don't think that that it's it's a fair thing to say to Shark. And I don't think that most of the arguments made against Shark were fair or accurate. That was my opinion. But let's watch this video. Okay, everybody, no more ramp up. We've been ramping up forever. We've been, this I just wanted to make sure, I just wanted to make sure that everything that I had to say was on the table. So you guys know where I'm coming from, okay? And he says, this video should probably have an epilepsy warning. Never done that before. Um, epilepsy warning. Apparently the editing gets pretty intense. If you have epilepsy, I guess be careful. I guess we'll find out. I'm, uh, all right, we'll see, I guess. All right. Let me put this up here. All right, you're gonna have to let me know how the audio is. To you by Grand News. From bona fide celebrities like J.K. Rowling. From oh, hold on, hold on, hold on a second. Hold on. By the way, I should be clear and just say this up front. This is a video called When You're Racist But Rambo. Foreign man, by foreign man in a foreign land. All right. So, um, yeah. Okay. When you're racist but rainbow. That is definitely a provocative title. Yeah, obviously racist but queer is what that means. Let's find out what, let's find out. Let's do it. This video is brought to you by Grand News. From bona fide celebrities like JK Rowling. From what I know about JK Rowling, she used to have an abusive husband, I believe, didn't she? And like for those okay. reasons, I think she's kind of using that as an excuse to sort of project the same sort of danger that she had from her husband onto trans women. I'm Dave Chappelle. They cancel people that are more powerful than me. They cancel J.K. Rowling. My God, J.K. Rowling wrote all the Harry Potter books by herself. Man just said J.K. Rowling canceled. Like that's supposed to mean any... Hold on. How much did J.K. Rowling make last year? I just want to know. I just want to know, how much did J.K. Rowling 
make last year. I wish I was canceled, Dave. She said gender was a fact. And then the trans community got mad. Yes. They started calling her a turf. Trans people make up words to win arguments. <laughs> turf is an acronym. It stands for trans exclusionary radical feminists. This is a real thing. This is a group of women that hate transgender. They don't hate transgender women, but they look at trans women the way we blacks might look at blackface. It offends them. Like, don't do an impression of me. You see, uh, I knew the c strong with him as soon as he said block. Whoa. You see, uh, I knew the c strong with him as soon as he said blocks. I'm not surprised that he said. I'm not surprised. Dave Chappelle will often talk about the queer. Okay. So. This is the kind of stuff that makes me lose respect for everyone involved in a project like this. You're talking about J.K. Rowling and, uh, and Dave Chappelle, both people who have engaged in extreme anti-trans rhetoric uh, while demonizing trans people and attempting to, to claim a victim status as having been persecuted by trans people while they themselves are enriching themselves making anti-trans content. And then he decides to insert an in an in joke uh, uh, that you that uses Shark 300, a smaller content creator, as a stand-in for uh, the sea slur. I is that is that a fair thing to do to somebody? Is that a reasonable, that is a, like, it's, it's a level of, I don't understand the stakes of what I'm talking about here that would look bad even if it came from like somebody, like a streamer who was acting off the cuff, but this was edited. There was an edited effect, a sound effect, a picture of this guy and a picture of a video of a raccoon all to get a shitty dig and to associate like act like actually to make it seem like shark is worse than them because shark is being used as a stand-in for an insult <sighs> it's that's pathetic that's embarrassing it's bad video making and it just seems crazy that's a crazy thing to do it's a, it's a crazy thing to do to a smaller content creator, even one that you don't necessarily like. And it's especially weird to open the video on this. I just... I don't understand this. I don't understand, and I don't understand why Jesse Gender, who is generally very, very, uh, let's just say very particular about, uh, racial sensitivity would agree to have her, her, to, to actually contribute to this video in a way where her face is on the screen as that joke is, is played. I don't understand this at all. I don't understand the rationale. I don't understand the sense. I don't understand how this is beneficial. And I don't understand how this is supposed to be perceived as fair to Shark. I, I really don't understand any of this behavior. And I think that's fucking shitty as fuck. I think that was a, that's a dirty joke. I think it's a, uh, conde a, a condemnable joke. I think it's in poor taste in addition to being un completely unfair, but more so 
than all of that, I just think it doesn't make any sense. You're talking about Dave Chappelle. You're talking about J.K. Rowling here. People whose wealth and fame are more than anybody in this space can possibly comprehend. And you decide to to make a tar to like throw a jab in that segment at a you know 100k subscriber YouTube channel that you have beef with. I don't know, man. I don't know. Fucking dumb, if you ask me. All right, let's go. Community. And then say, well, I'm a black man. I understand marginalization. But then... Soul Bunny is in chat and says, it doesn't make Shark look worse than JK and Dave. I disagree with you. I think if you're saying, if you're, you're, you're using Shark's face as a substitute for an insult that you're levying at Dave Chappelle and not the other way around, it implies that Shark is the pre-existing insult. I think that, I think that does actually. I, I do think that that implies, um, I mean, literally it's saying that, that Dave Chappelle is giving Shark energy. That's like literally the joke is if you don't if you don't read in to the slur that's being replaced that's being censored you're saying that Dave Chappelle is giving <laughs> excuse me goodness sudden sneeze I think that's pretty weird I just think that's really weird Soul Bunny says it's just an inner community joke and both they both Shark and Foreign have the same sub count do they Foreign man has 105 okay Hold on, let's take a look. Is, is Shark actually at 105? But when I, by the way, when I said smaller, I meant smaller than Dave Chappelle and J.K. Rowling. You're leveraging anger about J.K. Rowling and Dave Chappelle, who absolutely deserve anger, and you're leveraging that at Shark, is the part that I, is, now I wasn't talking about Shark being smaller than foreign man in a foreign land. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, they're about the same size as far as subs subscribers go. Good to know. I hope you stick around, Soul Bunny. I'd I'd uh, I'd be open to talking with you after I react to this video. Anyway, let's continue. We'll like say some transphobic stuff and we'll say, well, I understand marginalization. I get it. But the, these trans people are like, they're, you know, they're, they're harming and attacking this white woman. Again, this like thing we were talking about in another video about like protect the white woman sort of thing. He will defend himself by, through his blackness. And then other people will also then bring that in too and be like, well, he's a black man. How dare you criticize a black man? Uh, you're a white woman. Um, like focusing on my whiteness rather than the fact that I'm trans in order to push my knee down um, and able to talk about him. It's used to stoke infighting between communities. Uh, and create these like dis disruption between communities to uh, to try and sever off solidarity between them. Now, I shouldn't speak on this because I am not a woman, nor am I a trans. But as we've established, I am a feminist. Look at him grin. He's so proud to be a. I won't give him a high five. Any face. I digress. From that. To internet icons like Vosh. Just say, bruh. Who? Wow. Oh, oh. Uh, and uh, Kefels. Let's see what that tender queers are. I don't take it back. I don't take. Okay. That is, in my opinion, a pretty. Uh, uh, this is what we call being in a bubble. This is this is really like truly what we call being in a bubble. If you think that Vosh and Keffels are even remotely on the same scale of general relevance um, as Dave Chappelle and J.K. Rowling, you got to wake up. You are existing. You have lost yourself. You are. That is what we call terminally online. Um, there is a direct comparison being made here. This is the first three minutes of the videos. And the, and the people who've been brought up are, as the examples of this, are 
Dave Chappelle, J.K. Rowling, Shark, Keffels, and Vosh. And, um, and also, both of these clips, am I watching the Nebula video or the YouTube version? The Nebula version is 20 minutes longer. Oh, I should watch the Nebula version. I have a Nebula subscription. Okay, I'll watch the Nebula version. He's showing their similarities, but the similarities are just, they're not, the, those aren't, those aren't comparable. Those aren't comparable. Let's go. Take it back. They are. FBI, open up! There's a legion of case studies that demonstrate a pernicious principle, a privilege, if you will. But the best introduction to this comes in the form of a Jussie Smollett. Now, if you recall, the panorama was the perfect cloak for Jussie's grand opening. Okay, of okay, this is a really petty point. Is is foreign man like a TikTok content creator first and foremost? Saying the panorama and bleeping out almost every word that like, or saying like, like say the panorama, that's like a TikTok thing, right? Oh, people are saying I missed something while I was switching videos. Okay, let me go back real quick. Wow. Oh, that's, that's oh, I'm uh, careful. See what that tender queers are. I don't take it back. I don't take it back. They are. FBI, open up. There's a lead. Okay, people are pointing out that using the FBI open up thing there is okay. First of all, really weird editing, but um, that is a little insensitive. Can we be completely honest? Like Keffels, Keffels is kind of notoriously famous in these spaces for having been swatted like within the last year and also that's a meme that's usually used about pedophiles like i'm not going to joke police everything here but that comes across as kind of fucking mean-spirited can we just acknowledge that can we acknowledge like how mean-spirited that is like i feel like if this was done in the reverse direction it would be it would be like a cancellation waiting to happen. Like if Keffels made a video that did a similar joke to Foreign Man or or Jesse Gender, um, that I feel like there would be a lot of anger about that. Can we acknowledge that? And also, I'm gonna be completely honest here. I'm just gonna be straight up with you guys. Do we really think that either of those examples that were shown are actually on par or even comparable to J.K. Rowling, uh, Dave Chappelle, and Jussie Smollett? Do we actually think that those are on par? For reference, the clip of Vosh saying the N-word was him in a debate with Nazis and they were being insanely racist and I'm not gonna say that what he did was right because I don't, it's not what I would have done. You guys know that. I don't fucking do that shit. I don't even say the arsler. But are we really, do we really think that's a fair comparison? Like, do we really think these are even in the same ballpark or they're, that they're even emblematic of the same thing? Do we actually, just honest with yourself, people who are watching this, do you honestly think that? That's fine, Soul Bunny. Uh, it, we'll, it, we still got a while, so you can just watch. And if you want to talk about the connected issues after this, I'm more than happy to do that. More than happy. Um, we got to get through the video first. And I'm admittedly a re I'm I'm a I'm a pause Andrea. So, yeah. That word used by white folk is hurtful, and he joked about it, but he didn't actually joke about it. Um, the joke, the the joke, um, was there wasn't a joke. He was just pointing out that the Nazis were were trying to avoid getting in trouble while saying horribly racist things, and he just called them on it. And I, I will say, like I, I again, it's not a move that I would do. But is this really? Is that? Is that really what people consider to be a racist act that's worthy of a comparison 
to to Dave Chappelle and J.K. Rowling. J.K. Rowling, who like gives money to hate organizations and actively promotes people like Maya Forstatter and uh, Posey Parker. Really? Is that is that is that really the, the what we're doing here? And also, let's go one step further. Is Keffel's calling tender queers retarded? Is that on the same degree? Is that even the same thing? And also, why is that considered, why is that being used as an example of racism? I've made fun of tender queers extensively. I have a problem with uh, people who basically very hypocritically uh, engage in abusive behavior in the name of, of progressive politics and uh, over police other people and treat people like shit. Does that mean that I'm being racist for some reason? I just, I feel very weird about all of these. I feel like, I feel like there's a lot of well poisoning going on in this essay so far. And I guess I can understand why people are a little frustrated about it because this feels like a very unfair thing to do. It'd be kind of like, um, I don't know. It's, it's, a br it's a very aggressive comparison to make. Let's continue. Of case studies that demonstrate. Laura Teaho White says, "Uh oh, Demon Mama is having a white woman moment." Oh yeah, what what's that? What white woman moment am I having right now? You want to explain that to the chat? Let's continue. Straight a pernicious principle, a privilege, if you will. But the best introduction to this comes in the form of a Jussie Smollett. Now, if you recall, the panorama was the perfect cloak for Jussie's grand opening of the critically condemned play, The Boot is on My Face. The very boot being the metaphorical manifestation of racism and homophobia packaged into a one-arc play armed with enough bleach to make Vibes Cartel himself blush and a noose bedizening the neck like a plantation-themed party. So whatever true diddly was art when he took this picture. Is there anything inside no. the apartment? No, 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 I just don't want my neighbors to know. Okay. So, so I explained to them how you were going to get something in. And, and the reason I'm calling you because... Okay. okay. Do you want to take it off or anything? Yeah, I do. I just want to talk to you. 72 reference. <laughs> Okay. Just clamored that he was accosted by two black men who called him homophobic slurs and popped it off with, this is mega country. The fact that this was so perfectly fulfilling the precipitous requirements for a hate crime made me dizzy. My head did bounce like ball and was swinging more than playground. Then celebrities proliferated the internet with responses of support for the Empire actor Jussie. And if you don't remember the show Empire, it brought you classics like this. <laughs> But the very actor that played Jamal Lyon turned out to be Lyon. I'm sorry, I, I shouldn't. I, I, I don't understand some of the jokes. Um, I haven't seen Empire, so maybe that's why. But I also don't know what that's supposed to mean. Whatever, let's go. Off, but if you were stage a hate crime, right? Then why besmirch the couple of them instead of the that swap their hoods for hats. Bench. <laughs> this is where we waited for Jussie to come before we attacked them. Anyway, the world dragged Jussie like a dead deer off to the side of the road because in an attempt to apprehend the attention Jussie believed he was entitled to, <laughs> he got the type of attention nobody wants, infamy. So what did he do in order to ward off the warranted criticism he got? 
He did this. Okay. I am not. Okay. I am not. I am innocent, and I am not. If I did this, then it means that I stuck my fist in the fears of Black Americans in this country for over 400 years, and the fears of the LGBTQ community. Your Honor, I respect you, and I respect the jury, but I did not do this, and I am not suicidal. And if anything happens to me when I go in there, I did not do it to myself, and you must all know that. Jesse Dool wielded the race card and the gay card, which in a white supremacist cishet society is somewhat of a draw for of performative people who brandish social justice warrior in their bio and bios alone. Wait, is this an anti-id poll argument? Is he making an anti-id poll argument? I will say I did not expect this to be an anti-id poll video, so I would be surprised if that's the direction that it goes like that oh um but the argument he's making here is saying that basically in our society if you play the race card or the gay card you can get away with anything but that's not actually true though because jesse smollett didn't get away with it jesse smollett got a little bit of of like a week of positive attention and now for years has been used as the butt of a joke like, there was a Je Jesse Smollett joke in The Righteous Gemstones. Like, a pr like a, 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 like in mainstream television now, there are jokes making fun of Jesse Smollett. I don't, I don't know. All right, let's, let's, get, let's continue. Let's continue. Now, you would probably say a retort that those marginalized cards didn't save Jesse from jail. Okay. Yeah, Nor did. did his lawyer, who is the current lawyer for the monospheric mogul in, sorry, Andrew Tate, not Angel, Jesus Webb. But it can be argued that the very card saved O.J. Simpson. Did you do it? <laughs> no, I didn't. Huh? After we finished filming, O.J. said to me that uh, he had a surprise for me, and I genuinely was surprised. I think it was his idea of a joke, and this is it. In any other scenario, a black man accused of wiping out a white woman will be thrown under the jail. But OJ's blackness was only rivaled by his wealth, as well as him being the closest possible to the pinnacle of patriarchy. A star-studded okay. athlete adored by the entire world. That trumped racist white America's voracious desire to protect white womanhood and white femininity which are pinnacles of white supremacy that if you haven't heard enough of, you could watch this video up here. But in short, white womanhood is so powerful that it can kill an Emmett Till. It can get the police called on you for simply existing while simultaneously being a badge of marginalization as white women and white femmes are subjugated in the patriarchal societies as well. Like you said, like J.K. Rowling uses her BuzzFeed feminism. That's what I like. I'm, I am having, at the moment, I am having a bit of a hard time following exactly what the point is. So we started, the video is when you're racist but rainbow. We started with a comparison or a the, the brackets were drawn of Keffels and Vosh and Shark and J.K. Rowling and... Um, and Dave Chappelle. And now we have an argument that playing the queer card is a draw for, a wild draw for, but also it didn't save Jesse Smollett, but it might have saved OJ. But then he says it wasn't the race card that sa saved OJ, it was money. So I, I, I feel maybe this will be resolved. But so far, I feel like I'm getting a lot of very conflicting vibes from this. And you want to know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of that last bit of the last ContraPoints video that we watched, where the end of the video contradicted what would have just been said prior, because in that segment, ContraPoints was able to get a dig in at Vosh, 
even if it undermined the rest of the video. And this is kind of what I'm talking about. Remember in the preamble, the long preamble I did to this, where I said that um, spite and pettiness is making um, people that I whose videos I would otherwise respect and like worse at their jobs, that it's making it less entertaining? I kind of feel like that's what's going on here. I, I, I kind of feel like this is an example of, of trying to find a way to, to condemn Vosh and Keffels while making a broader point, but that broader point being undermined by the need to go after Vosh and Keffels. Anyway, let's continue. Like to also call it <laughs> JK Rowling, Taylor Swift, like utilize that white feminism. Like they only care when the issues pertain to them, but they won't fight for other marginalized identities, which is actually like the core root of feminism. You fight for equality. Like sure, like intersectionality is a key part of feminism. And if you want to fight for equality, you should fight for it on all aspects. God, God damn it. Sorry about that. Foreign from the foreign last sweatshop. And you already know that I had to go and make a mention of Ellen DeGeneres, one of the prime examples of people who weaponize their white femininity and also, of course, the queerness, as well as the latest white woman of the week. We, we can make that a segment, white woman of the week. Wait, wait. There's no examples of this? Like, I am not a fan. I'm not like a super fan of Ellen DeGeneres. But like, Ellen DeGeneres' queerness was like, her entire career was overshadowed by the most deranged harassment you can possibly imagine. Um, just so that we're clear, um, Ellen DeGeneres was supposed to be in a J.C. Penny ad. I believe it was in the early 2000s. And there were nationwide protests that resulted in her no longer being in those ads nationwide protests happened because they dared to do a partnership with a queer woman. While I'm sure that there probably are examples of Ellen DeGeneres like misusing her marginalized status, it would be good to provide those. I, I would, I would, I think it would be valuable to provide that here. Especially if we're going to pivot over to, uh, I don't know, who are we going to pivot over to? JK Rowling? Okay. Colleen. Colleen. Hey, what the doing? It's been a while since you saw my face. Well, that's a really bad example to go to. Because Colleen Ballinger has been obliterated online. I don't, I, I, I've never seen any, any, uh, uh, YouTuber apology go as viral as Colleen Ballinger's. I don't think, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if this is a good example to pivot to. I mean, maybe leading up to the point, like, cause people didn't think like people, people didn't, but I mean, a lot of it didn't come out. Well, I mean, I guess it did. I don't know. All right, let's hear it out. Let's let's hear it out. Let's hear it out. I've been doing so great, so I took a little break. So a lot of people are saying some things about me that aren't quite true. It doesn't matter if it's true, though. Just as long as it's entertaining. They don't know what to do when they're in a situation where they have to be accountable. So they don't know what accountability looks like. I think that Ellen and J.K. Rowling... Huh? Huh? Uh, what? I I actually don't know what that point was supposed to be. Colleen Ballinger. I mean, I would I would go so far. I saw a clip of a of Vosh reacting to this, and I think he said that um, he felt like like the white womanhood actually backfired on Colleen Ballinger because of because online misogyny meant ukulele woman funny to laugh at. And I think I kind of agree with that to a certain degree. Posting a ukulele video is like the most 
like like stereotypical stupid white woman thing you could possibly do i don't think that helped i think that actually hurt so i might agree with vosh on that particular point i don't i don't know what's going on let's continue share something here um and it's something that i have seen it's gonna surprise no one at this point i think it's just it's the power of whiteness it's existing in that proximity to all of the social things that whiteness grants you, so much power has been ceded to you as a white person throughout your entire life in all of these like small social interactions that you have, in turning on the news and seeing people like you, in turning on various TV programs and seeing people like you, in not having to actively look for people who look like you. You don't have to seek them out, they find you. You have some sense of power over the world around you. And I think that that starts to dictate. Trans girl Lily says, the argument is that no innocent person would take such a serious unsubstantiated accusation so flippantly if they were uh, innocent. I don't know if that was the argument. I think the, ar hold on, to, to try and, st and, st and steal man, foreign man's argument here, I think the argument was supposed to be that, um, only a white woman would ever think that a ukulele apology um, is is like correct, but I don't know. I mean, maybe, but I don't know if that's like. Um, I don't know. I don't know what that. I don't. I don't know. I don't know if that makes the point he's trying to make because I think the point he was trying to make was that you can use your identity to shield you, and it didn't shield you. Maybe. But I, I feel like Colleen Ballinger, maybe, maybe, but but I feel like it's more like a combination of factors that Colleen Ballinger is terminally online, also a white woman, also ridiculously rich, also surrounded by yes men, also literally had group chats of children that she specifically targeted to boost her ego. Maybe that is, maybe the argument is that it's only possible for a white woman to achieve that, but I don't think that's an amazingly strong argument personally um yeah I, I don't know if i i don't know if i I'd, I'd go with that being the strongest argument to be made here um yeah yeah i don't know all right let's continue we need to continue let's continue how you behave in positions where you feel like you're losing power i think that people who are used to experiencing a certain amount of social control are more likely to react with intense negativity or in ways that are really lashing out when they start to lose that social control. So I think that both J.K. Rowling and Ellen DeGeneres, I think that they're both experiencing that. Now, obviously, the word privilege in this context of marginalized folk is not the same as white privilege and the like, due to the infrastructural and historical violence that rends whatever privilege we have from our hands. But the paucity of privilege that marginalized Jesus. folks have Sorry, in I progressive gotta, spaces pop up here. is what oh. we're discussing today. Jesus, what hold is... on a second. Windows, chill the fuck out. Holy shit, Windows. Holy shit. Sorry about that. EA attacks. My God. It's marginalized privilege. And how do we address it as progressives? And I got a star-studded cast of guests that are local to the communities that are being critiqued rather than me the sisters of head black men doing an inter-community criticism. But mm. I can criticize this. My experience. <sighs> hmm. That kind of sits weird with me. I missed how Ellen is connected to J.K. Rowling, or did he not connect them? There was nothing substantiated to connect those two. It was sort of by inference, so I'm kind of confused. Um, I'm, I'm kind of confused as to what uh, what the connection was there. I don't know if Ellen is on the same level as J.K. Rowling, even close, honestly. I don't know. They're white women? But I feel like there needs to be an argument that says like what what they like specifically what's being 
they're both white. Well, but that's obvious. You can look at them and see that, right? I don't, I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Also arguing against id poll while doing id poll. Well, that's the thing that's weird to me. If it's about id poll, if the argument is that, if the core argument of this video is that uh, identity only matters so far, um, you can still be an asshole or dishonest or or you can misuse id poll, then I don't know that it helps all that much to bring in other people, to bring in, I'm sorry, but this is a little tokenizing, to be like, I brought in three of my friends from these communities to talk about them. And also, have we gotten to that part? The, the critiques have not even been established. I find this video very confusing so far. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest. Let's continue. Let's just continue though. Of weaponizing marginalization as a black man myself. Now, if you are familiar with this channel, I have called, I'm sorry, we, we need to talk about the white slander. I have called white people, skeet colored, sun dodging paper impersonating people, the mm -hmm. list goes on. I've said things that will be read back to me in the court that decides. Wait, does anybody have, wait, hold on. We should play my clip here. Does anybody have a link to the clip of me reading off the white people slurs? Uh, from my, Yes. Hold on. I have it here. We'll watch mine cuz I think I can I think I can do it good too. Okay? Hold on. Let me let me grab the uh let me grab the timestamps. Where is it here? Is it right here? Is this it? So, uh everybody, what do we want to talk do you want to take a second to talk about the culling? The, the I want I I think it's here. Um I like it. Uh I appreciate that. Good. Condom supported its use. I recently have never supported such heinous and disgusting language in my entire life. It is... Oh, here it is. We got the direct clip. Oh, yeah, this is better. Here's the clip. Thank you. Thank you. Of course, Blablado. Thank you. Here we go. Speaking of slurs, everyone. <clears throat> Pasties, snow roaches, mayo sapiens, glue skin, caucasoids... Powder Rangers, Vanilla Gorillas, Mayonnaise Mafia, Neanderthal Nation, Cornstarch Crusaders, Mayo Marauders, Children of the Chalk, Albino Skinwalkers, Milk Crickets, Yin on the Inside, Yang on the Outside, Plantation Barbies, Re Ready Whip Rascals, Blizzard Maggots, Colorless Cardboard, Evolution's Biggest Mistake, Christopher Columbus's Sister's Daughter, Hueless Hooligans, Cave Beasts, Baking Soda Boys, The Clu Klux Kleenex, Parmesan Parasites, The Yeast Beasts, Recessive Genes, People of No Color, Chalk Demons, Gentrification Gorillas, Ice Rats, Enemies of the Sun, Melanin Deficient, Cauliflower Crustaceans, Snow Termites, Living Life on Maximum Brightness, Vanilla Villains, Glue Sticks, Wonder Bread Women, Sour Cream Citizens, Blank Google Doc, Children of the Chalk, Milk Mode Initiated, Eggshell Individuals, not good. Oh yes, and definitely never say cum skin. So, just so that we can understand that we're on the same page. Me and me and Foreign Man are on the 100% same page when it comes to slurs. I, I have the fame of doing the, I, I was denouncing them. I was denouncing them. You guys can't say I'm anti-white because I was denouncing them, but I did say them all. Whether I go to heaven or hell, and all that I could hope for is that my family gets a discount for my funeral because I know ain't no way I go to heaven. And I would, I would blush if I found out that they spend so much money just for me to go to hell. Even God, even if God himself is up there smoking yeah. and getting they yeah. ate, it don't matter. But there's, there's one thing I did that truly demonstrates how- Why, I, okay. This is, again, extremely, um, extremely petty. 
small thing. Can we can we all acknowledge that the TikTok form of censorship is not healthy? It's not good for any of us. That was that ruined the jokes. And also, crack and ass are not going to demonetize you, okay? Saying the word pandemic doesn't de demonetize you, okay? Like on TikTok, they don't TikTok does actually do some weird uh, uh, suppression stuff, and it's led to TikTokers being super paranoid about censorship to the degree that they speak like they say, like for example, um, on TikTok, the word mascara is a is is used as a euphemism for sexual assault, which. To a certain degree, I understand why they might think the term sexual assault might be like banned. But I think that like the environment on TikTok um, has led to people um, engaging very unhealthily in, in a type of communication that is very annoying to me. It's riddles. Yeah, just say SA. I worried that unalive will just stick around. Oh, they do that too, unalive. Um, all of these things. It's so weird. Roblox? Yeah, people do the Roblox one and Minecraft. Some of them make sense to me. Other ones, not so much. I can't help but feel like TikTok is bad for our brains generally. This isn't me really hating on him. Um, because I mean, you know, I, I understand it to a certain degree, but I think we should acknowledge that like TikTok's weird... A a a algorithmic censorship is damaging our brains. Algo speak? Yeah, it is. It's, it, it is. It's, it's algorithm speak. Oh, marginalization could be weaponized. And that was my most popular video at the moment. Asia phobia in the black community. I vividly recall my heart dropping into my yes! after Whoa. I upload this video and I saw the sign that YouTubers fear the most. The limited monetization sign. Oh gosh. This meant that all my hard work would be for naught. So I started campaigning, claiming that YouTube is penalizing me for being a black creator, discussing these racy issues, which is definitely something that happens, but not this time. Regardless of the commentary Whoa. we had on how the algorithm. Oh, bro, what? What, 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 huh? Algorithm treats us, we people who are darker than blue, as opposed to our colorless creator counterparts. I knew that folks will rally behind me if I cried algorithmic racism rather than the fact that my video got limited monetization because I said something that I shouldn't have. Okay, I'm sorry. Can't say I've ever weaponized. My man, this is what we call a self-report. Holy fuck. Wh I missed it. Can you say what he did? He said that he deliberately lied and created a campaign in which he claimed that YouTube was racially discriminating against him because he was mad that his video got demonetized. So instead of re instead of re-editing the video, he made a social media campaign claiming that he was being discriminated against for his race. Wh why would you do that? I actually prepared something because I heard that this was a segment in the video and just in case I wanted to I wanted to talk about something um in case this really was something that was confessed to in the video. I heard people talking that he admitted to this. And I have to say that's a fucking terrible thing to do. 
Some of you may remember that um, back in like 2019, between like 2017 to 2019, there was a period um, in YouTube's history where YouTube uh, actually got sued um, by multiple YouTubers um, because their algorithm would automatically suppress videos that had the word gay, LGBTQ, LGBT, queer, lesbian, these videos would be automatically um, demonetized, they would be automatically suppressed by the algorithm, and they would sometimes, even when there was no adult content by their own TOS, they would be marked as adult. And in fact, it got to the degree um, that there was actually, they actually hid it from the public. There was hidden tags that would be applied to videos, even if you didn't put uh, the word LGBT or gay in there, if that was the topic that you were talking about, there was a tag in the back end that would be applied to your video that would suppress the video uh, in the algorithm and often lead to it being demonetized. This was a real thing that happened that YouTube actually admitted to. In fact, the lawsuits were reported on by Rolling Stone. Queer YouTubers claim the internet platforming is targeting videos not because of their content, but because of the sexual identity of the creators. In March of 2017, filmmakers Sal Bardo started noticing something strange. The views for his short film, Sam, which tells the story of a transgender child, had started dipping. Confused, he looked at the other videos on his channel. All but one of them had been placed in restricted mode, an optional mode that screens potentially mature content without YouTube ever informing him. In July of that year, most of them also ended up being demonetized. One of the videos that had been restricted was a trailer for one of his short films. Another was an It's Get Better video aimed at encouraging LGBTQ youth. Sam had been shadow banned, meaning that users couldn't search for his content on YouTube. None of the videos were sexually explicit or profane. Bardo started digging further into the issue and speaking to other creators and realized that a lot of videos that were com completely benign were LGBT or had been tagged as LGBT and were being targeted. Many of these videos were similar to his in that they were fairly anodyne. But when he saw a post on the YouTube creators blog stating that some LGBTQ content creators had been affected by changes in the algorithm and that the company was aware of the issue and working on it, he was reassured, particularly after he successfully appealed for restricted mode to be lifted off of his videos in early 2018. By 2019, however, most of the content was restricted again without any heads up or explanation from YouTube. So that gives you the gist of the story. This was a real thing that happened. Uh, I remember reading about it. I remember talking about it when it happened. Um, and I remember uh, that YouTube basically went underground with it. They acknowledged that it was happening publicly and then they moved to an invisible tag system, which ended up being revealed because of tools that plug into the YouTube API revealed that there were tags being placed on LGBTQ content. The point of this being, YouTube actually really, really, really has discriminated against and has admitted to discriminating against LGBTQ content, or rather, uh, of algorithmically affected them. They wouldn't acknowledge that as discrimination, but I think it's fair to call that discrimination. I think it's fair to call that what it is. So I think it's pretty shitty. I think it's pretty shitty to try to weaponize idpol in a situation where you knowingly know that you weren't discriminated against, where you know that your video was hit for something else because you want to make money. That does damage to people who are actually affected. That damages the credibility of people who have actual complaints. He didn't say that. He, we just watched it. Do I need to watch it again? He's bringing this up as an example of his own past bad behavior. That's a terrible thing to do. That's a terrible thing to do. And also, it's just a self-report. Like, I don't know, man. That's, in my opinion, that's like, instead of making a video to make money off of this shit, you should do some introspection. You should have a come to Jesus moment on your own. 
not make a video that you're trying to make more money off of targeting other people. Like, that's literally... <laughs> Not to continue with the Amogus uh, uh, references, but that's like literally what the imposter does in, Am in Among Us. <laughs> you do a self-report to throw off suspicion off yourself onto other people. He's making money off this video. That is like, it's just being like, yeah, I'm still grifting. That should destroy your credibility. What the fuck? And all of this to support what? Where is this video going? Except to be a a public, uh, like, uh, oh God, don't get mad at me, even though I'm admitting to being the one using these things wrongly. It's like he's using his own, it's projection, using his own wrongdoing to, to try and implicate other people. Dude, deal with your own, fucking clean your room first. What the fuck? Sorry about that. My window bled over. The transness. But have I done that thing where I have been guilty of reinforcing white supremacy? You're coming off as intentionally obtuse? C.L. Crowley, I don't know how much more blunt I can be. You sound like you're a dick rider. Or generally just shitty attitudes and then been like, but... But like, no, I you you can't you can't call me out on that because I've been through X Y Z absolutely, absolutely, and it's why I'm recently made a mistake. Um, I completely misspoke about the concept of female privilege. We all know, like that would be an example of me speaking about womanhood as a man, and I could have been like, okay, but I'm trans, but I didn't. I became an adult when I came out. I became a hold better on, person. Hold on. I Sorry, hold be on. an example. Um, I completely misspoke about the concept of female privilege. We all know, like, that would be an example of me speaking about womanhood as a man, and I could have been like, okay, but I'm trans, but I didn't. I became an adult. So this guy did the right thing, and now foreign man is using this guy to assuage his own guilt about about falsely invoking, misleading people using race. When I came out, I became a better person when I came out. I became a real person when I came out. Prior to coming out, I was more likely to fall back on having been oppressed as a woman than I ever have been as a trans person. But I forgot you were ever a woman. I was just like, I was just like, <laughs> I forget too. I lived as a woman so- How is this not literal tokenism? I mean, it just is tokenism. When you say, I brought a bunch of people to launder my reputation to make me feel better about the fact that I misused identity politics while I'm making a video that is attacking other people for allegedly misusing identity politics, not actually providing evidence of those people abusing identity politics while also coyly admitting that you did. I, I think this is terrible. This is fucking terrible. Genuinely terrible. It's not a cookie. Thank you so very much for the gifted five tier one subs. Deeply appreciate the support. Thank you thoroughly that I believed it myself for a long time. And the most the most obvious example would be like the white woman tears thing, right? Like, did I ever do it in such a way that I was harming someone directly? Not that I can remember. I certainly fucking hope not. However, did I speak as a white person and then respond as a woman? Yes, absolutely. <clears throat> the sad part is, is that it worked. The limited monetization was lifted. I paid your thing worked. What did what did um I can't remember what the name of this this person is. What's this guy's name? What's his name? Uh well, what did what did what did what he said have anything to do except for interceding to make it sound like you're less bad than you are? My rent. And the video went on to be acclaimed by my critics and contemporaries. But Swolsome aka Finn. Okay, thank you. Finn Swolsome, okay. 
I bit the hand that fed me to do this, to get this acclaim. And by admitting to it, I'm also robbing the next creator of color that claims the algorithm, the algorithm is biased against them. And because folks may doubt that now. Yeah, you did. And you're also doing it now. You're, you're, this is a video that is monetized that you are using. You are clickbaiting off of Vosh and Keffels. You're clickbaiting off of this uh, schism between video essayists and debate people uh, in order to what? Uh, do a public, uh, you know, apology, like self-flagellation? What the fuck? Due to my admission, much like they doubt Elliot Page when they call him the new Justice Smollett without even knowing the veracity of his tears. But most of all, I robbed myself of the merit that this video had because I can never be sure <laughs> if the video would have performed this well had it not been for the block boost. In this current landscape of leftist communities, we- No, dude, it's not the black boost even. It's not even the black boost. It's the fact that you made it out like you were victimized in a way that you weren't. You took advantage of other people. You took advantage of their genuine care. It's not just, it's not a black boost. You lied in a way that garnered sympathy for yourself in a, in a space that is sympathetic to your struggles. It's not a black boost. There's a lot of ways you can do that. You just happen to use one that uh, pitches to your audience a little better because they're sensitive about these issues. Jesus Christ. To make, to make money, just, just, just for YouTube bucks. Again, I just wanna take a moment of appreciation for myself here, okay? I'm gonna just toot my own horn so loud just blasting my own horn for just a second, okay? Which is to say, aren't you all fucking glad that I'm up front with you all? That I just tell you straight the fuck up? I'm an edutainer. Don't expect me to be some kind of movement leader or savior. Don't expect me to be that. I'm here to have make sure you have a good fucking time. Aren't you fucking glad? Isn't it refreshing to be watching somebody who fucking talks to you like you have a, a functioning brain who doesn't fucking pander to your stupid, uh, to whatever manipulative bullshit that doesn't pander to everything I think that you want to hear? Isn't it fucking nice? <sighs> I'm glad that you just showed us a video of you saying anti-white slurs. I was denouncing them. I was denouncing them. Didn't you pay attention to the video? We weigh the perspective of marginalized folks a bit more than our racist white. I mean, racist white counterparts. And while there is discourse on whether we really listen to marginalized folks or not, rather than simply signaling that we do, there is discussion to be had on whether this affirmative action of opinion goes awry or not. I guess it's quite similar to like, uh, you know, Blair White. Um, quite an easy way to like round up support for yourself and sort of grift in a way. Like, I think a lot of right wing people like to think that they're not being transphobic while they're being transphobic. They're like, I think they like to say things like, well, I can't be transphobic because I'm listening to this trans person and agreeing with them. Yeah, that's the purpose of a token. That's what, I'm sorry, but that's what foreign man is doing here foreign man brought on trans people, brought on queer people to say, I'm not being harmful to these communities. I'm not being harmful or discriminatory to the people that I've, that I've compared to heinous figures. Because look, they agreed with me, but actually what, 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 what trans, the trans people who've come on so far haven't actually said anything that supports foreign man's behavior or his arguments. even though that trans person is saying really transphobic stuff. The Candace Owens as well with like, you know, black issues. And it's, it's like, it, it seems to be People quite- People are saying Municat here is correct, but it's just that, that foreign man is also doing it. Yeah, he is also doing it. And what's worse is he's using it to distract from the fact that he just did a massive self-report. He just admitted to explicitly being, to, to engaging in race grifting. He had just admitted to 
to taking advantage of the well-meaning beliefs of his audience to make personal money. And he also just sort of said flat at the camera, I know this is gonna hurt black people. Anyway, let me pivot to somebody else talking about something different. Jesus fucking Christ. He admitted a mistake, like honest him. You are a fucking moron. You are a dupe. C.L. Crowley, you are a fucking dupe. Can I just, can I just take a minute? How fucking dumb can you be? I'm calling you out specifically. How much of a dupe can you be? You are a mark. Literally. The, this is a video that can, can, we've been watching this whole fucking thing. This video started out as an attack against Vosh and Keffels and fucking 20 minutes into it, he admits that he's actually the one he's talking about in this video. He didn't give any evidence of Keffels and Vosh doing anything so far. I'm sure he's gonna spend the rest of the video shitting on him and he's using other queer people to help soften up his own fucking mistakes. Admitting that you lied to your audience is a big fucking deal. Admitting that you lied using genuinely, their genuinely held political beliefs on an issue that he knowingly did it. He knew it at the time, he knew it now. This is not some mea culpa, uh, he's making fucking money off this video. This video is on Nebula. The, the, the fucking fans paid for this video. This is not some kind of, uh, I'm doing penitence for my bad actions. This is g g laughing in your face and saying, I got away with it. And if you stupid idiots don't unsubscribe, it'll just prove that I've successfully harvested an audience that is willing to be manipulated by me. That's a huge fucking admission. I've never fucking done that shit. And you want to know why people believe me when I say something is because I don't fucking lie to your faces. I'm honest about what I am, I'm honest about the type of show that I run, and I say the truth. If I think I'm being discriminated against, I come with reasons. If I think I'm gonna levy a fucking accusation against another fucking content creator, I come with receipts. CL Crowley, I sure hope you don't come across a fucking con man one of these days, because you are gonna get ripped for everything you're worth. Have you considered investing in NFTs recently? Fuck. Let's go. Easy to round up a lot of support because I think there's a lot of um, people not wanting to label themselves as racist or transphobic or whatever. Users on Twitter have made the running joke that people have begun using labels to justify their terrible behavior and also poke fun at how excessive labels now border on the absurd. Ryder and Nepo Baby Grifter, Lena Dunham is probably one of the most chaotic, problematic celebrities America has the- Unchained Mel, thank you so much for supporting the show. Wait until he talks about autism. No spoilers, no spoilers. Let's go. Misfortune of giving birth to. Rather than her work, she has become infamous for her continuous white feminist antics. Like, <laughs> casting women of color to only play the help on her shows and people of color as random episodic plot devices rather than people themselves. Lest we forget Sydney Anderson being the Jamaican nanny and housekeeper, or even Mo Hindi as the Roosevelt Hotel bellhop. What about Joe Yang, who played the Tibetan nanny? Or Jamel Howard, who acted as the young black guy? Literally just a young black guy. Naturally, when confronted by her Consistently so on the nose, you can smell it from here, casting choices. Lena eloquently responded that she, like, really tried. This is me flipping my non existent blonde curls. <laughs> Sorry, I can't be talking bad about white women like this. Um, really tried to be aware and bring in characters whose job it was to go hashtag white people problems. Guys, I'm gonna get canceled for that on. Go hashtag white people problems. No one. Okay, let's. He's making a big. He's making a big show about this, but um, I'm gonna be completely honest. First of all, fuck Lena Dunham, obviously. But also, newsflash: Lena Dunham is basically the the most the most excusable person you can ever make fun of. Lena Dunham is like a free 
is like a a a, a, a like a like a community chest. Uh, you, you bank error in your favor. You can make free jokes about Lena Dunham. Newsflash to anybody out there who hasn't paid attention. Lena Dunham has been like the the iconic fucking person that you shit on if you want to make fun of uh, of women comedians. Lena Dunham is like hated by the entire conservative sphere because she because they would literally. I've seen videos by conservative channels that are all about how Lena Lena Dunham is proof that women aren't funny. She's like, and nobody gives a fucking shit. Nobody would ever cancel you for making fun of Lena Dunham. Lena Dunham is like the gimme. You can always make fun. You know how people say you can, you, you can, it's never racist to make fun of Italians. You can always make fun of Italians. You know that fucking joke that people make? It's like that, but with Lena Dunham. You could, people make fun of Lena Dunham like crazy. D where the fuck have you been? What the fuck? Making jokes about Lena Dunham is a rite of passage. Guys, I'm gonna get canceled for that, aren't I? People will say something awful about another community that is not their own, but then will use their their uh, a marginalized identity to then sort of protect themselves as a shield from that. I often see this with folks who only have one identity of marginalization where everything else is mainly dominant culture. So like Dave Chappelle is a black man for sure and faces a lot of shit for that. I do not want to downplay that, but he's also a man. Um, he's also rich, right? And so like, you will like pull out the, his blackness to defend all the other horrific, like classist shit that he does, uh, homophobic, transphobic shit that he does, but he'll pull out his blackness. Same thing you see with JK Rowling. Well, often when she does transphobic, homophobic, she will yeah, say and like everyone in this video is doing right now a video uh, uh, That that opened by comparing Vosh and Keffels to JK Rowling and Dave Chappelle who are both literally Multi-millionaires who spend most of their time attacking trans people these days like, well, I'm a woman. You can't, you're attacking me because, and this is turfs to always do this. Like, you can't attack me because I'm a woman. This is sexism, you see. This is, this is, they like pull on that because I think one, it allows them again to sort of remove themselves from responsibility for their actions and center their, their marginalization to do so. But then also, I think it's also just because uh, an unconscious thing is because they see, because they understand what it is to face sexism in certain respects. They sent, seem to think that all criticism of them is that thing. Because of course, solving white people's problems on acting as a foil is definitely the job of people of color. And certainly not the job of her extremely mayonnaise characters to look internally at their own flaws and, you know, I don't know, maybe have some character development. Mind you, this the same director who onboarded Donald Glover to act, who is extremely problematic by his lonesome, he need no help, in the same show. During the very same time, she accused this character of fetishizing her whiteness. And she, she claimed that she don't see race and doesn't see him as a black man. I am not making this <laughs> up. Erasure of others' identities and experiences while simultaneously using their own as a certified get out of jail free card. Is that gonna be what happens in the next part of this video? Cause we're getting to the part that says the section you scoundrels are looking for, which let me notice, let me just point out again, the section you scoundrels are looking for in a video that features Keffels and Vosh on the thumbnail and opens by talk by playing the uh, I guess infamous clips of Vosh and Keffels. You know I'm getting a I'm getting a pattern with Foreign Man in this video, which is that he does the I disavow, just like I, you know, the joke that I made about all the white the white slurs. I read them all off and then I slay I disavow. I I don't. I don't approve of these anti-white slurs that I just read off. This is just, it's just going, uh, it's bad when others do it, now I'm gonna do it. It's, this is, this is, it's dishonest. I hate this shit.
This is exactly the type of stuff that I was talking about at the beginning of this. It's fucking odious. It's tiring. It's bad. It's fucking bad content, and it's fucking doesn't help anybody. It's a huge tactic among Lena's ilk. Her antics, of course, don't end there, though. They just keep on going. Because tell me why. This woman visited Japan and penned an orientalist piece about how she had yellow fever and described a Japanese art dealer as being gorgeous like the strong, sexy, dreadlocked Mongol encroaching tiger, hidden dragon. Yeah, Lena Dunham is a piece of shit. Everybody knows this and she's been mocked for it. What's the point here? What's the point? I don't know what the point is. Is the point that, that like, she hasn't been completely canceled? Or that she's rich still? Because she started rich, right? I, I'm confused. I don't, I don't understand what's going on. She's not even, is she even gay? Is Lena Dunham even gay? No, she's not even gay. Lena Dunham says she's disappointed that she's not gay because she has such a strong connection to the LGBT community. Why is this even, why is this even being brought up? People of color aren't except from this phenomenon, however. As white-coded as the act of shielding oneself to join an oppressed, marginalized group may seem, the iconic Twitter account, Emo, Black Thought, disguised himself as a cis black woman for years, even going as far to tweet about her experiences while menstruating and excruciatingly- Because she's white? Yeah, but this is the title of this video and the, the recurring theme is when you're racist but queer. I'm talking so about how painful her cramps are to her tens of thousands of followers who most likely were primarily comprised of black women. And after being unmasked, Isaiah Hicklin attempted to rebrand with the assistance of platforms like Paper Magazine, which of course was to no avail. Isaiah had been masquerading as a black, dark-skinned, bisexual woman named Nicole for years. F's in the chat for black, dark-skinned women named Nicole. That's not something the people who stood by and eagerly supported would quickly forget. It's not just about being queer. Well, but I also don't understand what the point is here. What did this person do? So they had, so they made a meme account and got popular while not being honest about their identity? What does that, what does that mean? What did they do? What, what is this? They were black and did a bad? Is he trying to say that because he disguised himself as a black bi woman that that's why he got a less than 200,000 subscribers on Twitter. I bet I bet that's not it cuz there's literally millions of black bisexual women who don't have 200,000 followers on Twitter. I bet it was because I'm going to make a guess here. I don't know. I'm going to guess he probably reposted memes from from Reddit and other Twitter accounts. And that's probably how he got 200,000 because that's how most 200,000 follower accounts get there. They steal memes from other accounts. I just, I don't get it. Sure, is it bad to deceive people? Yeah, it is. But does that prove anything here? I just don't get it. I it's don't understand, I don't, I don't understand this point. Some people speculate that the Maddie Taylor relationship was PR. But like Taylor seems exactly like the type of person to fall for a guy like Maddie Healy. She's the rapper that has Spice Girls. Inuit Spice Girls. <laughs> Just this chubby Chinese lady. <laughs> yeah, I'm rapping her music. Do they talk like that? Did anyone talk like that? They don't talk with a Chinese accent. They talk like a more Hawaiian style. Like this like, like grungy, huh? weird, edgy dude who still thinks he's like a 13 year old edgelord. Like, what is this? Who's like anti woke. Yeah, like she, I'm gonna come for Taylor Swift. And what the fuck is going on here? Taylor Swift is also not gay. What is this? What is going on? 
Nerodia, thank you for the tier one sub. Thank you for supporting the show. Not because I'm a misogynist, but no, this is the she same seems video. like the type of woman who says she's an ally to the gay community specifically, and she'll go to like all the parades. She'll like say yes, queen, when she sees a drag queen, but she won't correct her homophobic boyfriend. Someone tweeted a picture of Taylor in front of like a like a plate of cookies that said Biden 2020 on it. And was like, how can she be racist? Okay. <laughs> By okay, somebody on the internet, somebody somewhere on some social, what is, what the fuck is going on here? What the fuck is going throw on? Throw him in jail, Biden, like crime bill Biden. If you ain't, if how are you black if you don't vote for me, Biden? Like, yeah, yep, yep. That's it's all the same black. energy as Kendall Jenner with the Pepsi. Blonde, bone straight wig, throw that shit, smudge lipstick, walking into the protest, panning to the pigs, token black and queer coded folks, product placement time, token Asian emo. Bow, I wanna be dapping me, damn the bacon hatin'. Watch me walk to him and then racism. He'll job be taking pics as I swing my hips. He t I am, I am. Now we're talking about the Pepsi ad. This video so far unironically feels like a like a shaking fist at cloud things that I'm angry about stream of consciousness. I do not understand how any of these things connect to one another, but I'm sure we're going to find out how they, how he tries to connect this to Vosh and Keffels at some point. Do you see what I mean? Do you guys understand what I'm talking about from the beginning of this video when I said that um, this like stupid feud, this stupid manufactured feud uh, just makes everything worse? Like this video there probably could be a good video out there about racism in the queer community. In fact, I know for a fact that there's videos out there, good videos out there about racism in the queer community. But this video had to be about Keffels and Vosh somehow, and now it just makes no fucking sense. Now it's just fucking nonsensical. Oh, and Shark. Don't forget that you had to throw in your, your dig at Shark. Oh, man. Takes a sip and now racism over. Jake Huron's like, I experienced sexism. I faced sexism as a woman. You know, I probably had to fight really hard to get my books out, to get them taken seriously. And you know what? I was right because those books are amazing. They made billions of dollars, right? And so she's like, I know what sexism is uh, and I've seen it. And so when other people come to her uh, and say, this is fucked up what you're saying about trans people, she then views that as sexism because it feels the same because she doesn't like recognize the difference between the dominant culture and people in power attacking her because versus like people below her because again, she only has one intersection of marginalization. And so she only views it on this axis of like, I'm being attacked or not. There are a few case studies that hit close to home and near the bone because they belong to our very community. Yeah, it's time. So people over here might occasionally say retard or whatever. Okay, I'll take people saying retard and supporting class emancipation than I will have taken them saying retard and not supporting class emancipation. Yeah, I'm hey, doing gay ops on tender queers. I'm encouraging my followers to make pick crew accounts and enter and infiltrate tender queer Twitter. So I've said this before, this is not new. This shouldn't be surprising to anyone who watches my content. I say the N word sometimes in private. Once they catch wind of the plan, they're going to all become incredibly suspicious of pit crews and they will eat each other alive. If you're a white dude, listen over here, this is the circle for white dudes who really love saying Nick. They love saying, they're like, I'm out. Okay, this is where they are, okay? I Does it matter which pit crew? No, just use a random one. But the more diverse, the better. Like, make it like a black butch lesbian. The cornbread tube versus white bread. Whole wheat bread. Baguette bread tube saga has been played. Uh, Harmsy with the tier two sub. Thank you very, very much for supporting the show. And also, I'll catch, actually, I'm just gonna be honest. I'll read out all of the donos at the end. I don't wanna interrupt. But also, I just don't know what to say here. Uh, what? What?
What? With a few names, but none is as incendiary as Walsh. What the devil? You all saw that? <laughs> Easily one of the forerunners of the debate brosphere. And listen, it's- See, I told you. What did I tell you? Remember at the beginning I said that this video uh, was 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 definitely gonna end up being about the debate bro versus bread tube uh, uh, schism, even though it's not in the title? I fucking told you, I fucking told you. Also, I think it's really cringe to do weird like Voldemort, he who should not be named type shit. I think that's extremely fucking cringe. All right, let's go. Possible to deny his indelible effect on the online left. That being said, he has employed many misogynies and tactical bigotries to make even the husk himself blush. This isn't a tactical bigotry. This is just saying a word. I'm sorry, that's not a tactical bigotry. That's saying a word. If you go and watch this clip, I'm sorry, he's not engaging in a bigoted argument. He said a word. I guess that you can have, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be angry at people if they have the opinion that the word should literally never be said. I get it. But at the same time, I don't think that that's a, that's a tactical bigotry. I don't think that's what that is. I don't think that's a fair interpretation of what happened. If you wanna criticize him, criticize him for what actually happened. Say, hey, this guy is cavalier with using the N word uh, in analytical si situations, which makes me feel like um, he's untrustworthy. But that doesn't come off as hard as saying tactical bigotries or saying that he's a racist just off the cuff, right? Like this is the telephone game that I was just talking about. Like people who say that Jesse Gender go ar like goes around saying the, the C slur constantly when that's just not true. That's not what happened. All right, let's continue. Let's continue. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Now there are far better break. Hey, that's from my debate with Destiny. No, it isn't. Never mind. I thought that was a different clip. I thought this was the clip where he pushed away Melina. This is a different clip. Never mind. My old friend. I thought that was the clip where he uh, where he pushed Melina away. Now, there are far better breakdowns of the many transgressions that these folks have made that will be linked here. But I want to discuss very briefly how they seem to shield themselves with their marginalized status. If you create progressive content on this platform, you have had an overlapping audience with Vosh. Echo, many folks will come in your comments clamoring about when will you talk to Vosh? claiming that we have more in common than in contrast. Give him a chance. He's clipped out of context a lot. You know, all that horse and PDF file rumors, they're just rumors. L listen. <laughs> Whoa, okay. That's a major fucking allegation, my man. That's a fucking major allegation. If you're gonna allege that you think somebody is a pedophile, you better fucking come with the evidence. This is something that I fucking run by. Surely he will back it up. And not just by throwing up random, unverifiable, contextless, <laughs> random PDF screenshots. File. Rumors, they're just rumors. L listen, <laughs> I don't care about that. You know what I care about? You know what foreign cares about? Big body foreign? I care about the racism. I care about- This is the clip that you thought it was? Oh yeah. <laughs> I can't believe you guys, hey, I, I'm, I'm a hating on you. I can't believe people stole this for a Vosh video when this is from my debate with Destiny. I made him that mad. That was me, not Vosh, you fucks. Stolen motherfucking valor. Again. Stolen motherfucking valor. <laughs>
<laughs> Whatever. All right, let's get back to it. All right. So a uh, foreign man has just off the cuff alleged with a oh, series of- You know, all that horse uh, and PDF one, file rumors, two, they're just rumors. Three, uh, contextless screenshots uh, of very horse. low quality uh, that are uh, that were up on the screen for three seconds. Also, why is this up here as evidence of being a pedophile? Furry art is good. Does does foreign man think that furries are pedophiles? Are you in highest res? Yeah. Oh no, I'm not. I'm at 720. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. There we go. Okay, it's still kind of grainy, but let's see. And PDF file room. This one is grainy even at top resolution. Here's a screenshot from 2018, which was, I believe, 2018. Was that, that was, that would have been like the year, that wait, February of 2013. Was Vosh even streaming in February of 2013? Or sorry, 2018? Maybe he thinks all furry, furries are zoophiles. Pretty problematic, my man. And here's a 2018 one that says, after I kill the capitalist, I fuck their neglected spouse on top of their corpse and then the neglected children. That's very obviously a joke. Are you fucking kidding me? That is very obviously a fucking joke, man. And this one doesn't even have Vosh in it. Is this one even from Vosh here? He started in 2019. That's what I thought. Maybe it was 2018. It was late 2018. This one doesn't even this one doesn't even have any evidence that it's Vosh. It's just a screenshot. This is fucking shit, man. Rumors, they're just rumors. N listen, <laughs> I don't care about that. You know what I? Darumba says the top right screenshot is out of context. Lower down in the conversation, he specifies not sexually that the age of consent he's referring to is for other things. I assume like medical stuff. I don't know. I'd have to talk to him about that. But also, none of this is evidence of him being a pedophile. None of these are evidence of him being a pedophile. Yes, rumors. L listen, <laughs> I don't care about that. You know what I care about? You know what foreign cares about? Big body foreign? I care about the racism. I care about the misogyny. You might be able to look past the bigotry, but- one of the shields that are raised when criticizing Vosh is his queerness, of course. But the one I like the most is his autism. I'm a different kind of autist. Big oh body foreign, they say. Yes, they call me that. Big Here's a video of Vosh going over the allegations. Oh yeah, I forgot he did a video of that. Let him speak for himself. All I'm pointing out is that this is like, I think that's again, another dirty move to just be like, oh yeah, people say he's a pedophile and then you throw up a bunch of things that look like you're providing evidence, but none of them are evidence of the thing that you claim. That's what we call fucking manipulative. This is something I've pointed out that, that video essayists do all the time. They literally throw up contextless screenshots or uh, less than 10 second video clips that, that you have absolutely no idea what was being said, whether it was a joke, whether they were framing somebody else's argument whether that whether it's actually them one of those screenshots that was on screen didn't even include a username We don't even know as a viewer if it came from Vosh It's so fucking stupid It's literally just propagandistic. It's misleading All right, let's hear about the autism Body foreign give him a chance. He's on the spectrum dust does not pick up on social cues For one how dare you? No, seriously, how dare you take me to be the ass that Jesus rode to Jerusalem on? And secondly, how dare you infantilize and dehumanize autistic folk them by putting them in a category impervious to criticism? But most importantly, we know this not to be the case because we have a whole Jesse Dom gender who is autistic. I have so many thoughts about this. The excuse wow. That is a that is a big ass token moment. Here, I brought in the autist. Oh man. 
this is this this video is not beating the terrible video allegations. Let me tell you that much. He's being like, don't criticize this. <laughs> yeah. Fucking oh no, autism, autism t Pokemon battles. <laughs> Vosh, Vosh summons <laughs> autism horse. I summon Jesse Gender. Oh no, oh no, Jesse. Is this really the way you want to be used? If somebody did this to me in a video, I would be fucking insulted. I'm not gonna lie. Don't fucking ever do this shit. Jesus Christ. Person because they can't communicate themselves as well because they're autistic. I used to work at a Boy Scout summer camp and there was a uh, gentleman who ran the rifle range and the shotgun range at our camp. There was this guy that he had issues with and every, uh, at the end of every um, day, we would do this like, we would do like, we'd march in formation, whatever, the paramilitary Boy Scout stuff, and we'd shoot off a shotgun. And this guy would shoot off the shotgun and he, the one guy who was autistic, he would prepare the shotgun for him. And one day, because he was pissed off at the man, he put in the wrong uh, shotgun powder that was just much louder. And that's dangerous when you have a weapon, even if the weapon doesn't have any bullets in it. And then we went and spoke huh? to the guy, the autistic guy who ran the shotgun range about this. And he's like, well, it was autistic. I didn't I didn't think it was like it was like I didn't think that it was uh, a bad thing. And I didn't understand. I'm like, no, you run the you run the shotgun range. You know about safety protocols. I know you do because you teach it. Um, what the fuck is going on here? Huh? Range about this, and he's like, "Well, it was autistic. I didn't, I didn't think it was like, it was like, I didn't think that it was uh, a bad thing, and I didn't understand." I'm like, "No, you run the, you run the shotgun range. You know about safety protocols. I know you do because you teach it. Um, and so to put it off on that is just using your autism as a shield to escape responsibility for your behavior. If that ain't enough for you, okay, guys, hold on a second." I have, to t I have to tell you a story. Once upon a time, when I was a kid, long ago, at a, at a different school that you've never been to, um, I was in a bank and this guy came running in and he started robbing the bank. And uh, he was like, Get, bam, he shot two shots up in the air with his revolver and he had, a, he had a cowboy hat on and he had a little bandana. And he said, put the money in the bag. Put the money in the bag. Everybody get down or the, or the old lady gets it. He grabbed an old lady and was holding her hostage. And they start putting the money in the bag and the alarms are all going off. And I was going, ah, I was hiding in the corner. And then the police came in and they were pointing their guns. And they were like, get on the ground, drop the bag of money. And he said, you can't shoot me. I'm autistic and gay and I'm black. And he pulled off the map and then he did a little dance. And he was like, look at how gay I am. I'm gay and autistic and black. I'm gay and autistic and black. And all of the police fell down and turned into dust and he got away with all the money. I can't believe it. It's insane. Anyway, fuck Vosh. We have Swalsome who is literally autistic and bisexual. Like, literally the same thing as Vosh without the edginess, which is, of course, caucus speak for racism. Vosh, him not saying it as much as his followers, being like, okay, but he's autistic, he's autistic, he's autistic. It's like, you guys need to recognize what you're doing here. Can we have just one example of Vosh using autism as a defense to any of the things that have been vaguely alleged? Can we have one fucking example? You're a fucking video essayist. This is supposed to be a fucking video essay. Where's the fucking, what did Vosh do? You haven't even said what he did. You've just vaguely said he did something and you haven't even provided an example of him doing this. Did he even do this? I'm friends with Vosh in real life and I've never actually heard him actually use in any point his autism to excuse anything, ever. I think I've heard him make a joke about it on stream where it was like uh, like he's playing Elden Ring and he died and he said that was because I was autistic and it's like a very obvious joke. I think that's literally the only time I've ever seen that. I think maybe once I've seen him talk about um 
him saying that he thought that people were being mean to him because he was autistic, which is a very different thing. That's not using it as a shield. That's him, uh, him suspecting somebody mistreated him because he's autistic and that he didn't catch up on the cues. I, have, I don't believe ever in the time that I've known Vosh that I've heard him say, oh, it's because I'm autistic. Does anybody have an example of it? I'm totally willing to be corrected. I don't know everything that he says. I don't watch all his shit. I don't see all his tweets, but I've never personally seen it and nothing has been provided in this video so far. He had a tweet on screen earlier, but that was very clearly a joke. Let's see the joke real quick. Hold on, yes, I wanna see it. Call me. Just, Here we go. I'm a different kind. Hold on, let me see. One of the shields that are raised when criticizing Let's see it. Let's see it. is his queerness, of course. But the one I like the most. I'm aware that Vosh has autism, by the way. It still doesn't mean his actions aren't able to be criticized. It does mean that, actually. Okay. This is the joke. This, are you, is this the example? This is the example? That is like the most obvious joke I've ever seen. That is like very obviously him saying, no, it does mean that actually. Th is, this, is this for real? I'm sorry, I I'm sorry, but this is very obviously a joke. There's no possible way. I don't know how you could interpret this as anything but a joke. It's a Twitter post where somebody says, I'm aware Vosh has autism. It doesn't mean his actions aren't able to be criticized. And then he says, actually, it does mean that. <laughs> is this autism? I'm a different kind of autist. Big body foreign. That's your other example? I'm a different kind of autist? That's not even like, that, that's not even like joke level. It's just a comment. What's that supposed to mean? Okay, let's get back to where we were. Racist that are genetic. That ain't enough for you? We have Swalsome, who is literally autistic and bisexual. Like, literally, this. Pokeball, play the autistic bisexual. He's got. Oh, man. I summon a, a steel ghost type Pokemon. I summon the autistic bisexual Pokemon. Same thing as Vosh without the edginess, which is, of course, caucus speak for racism. This is fucking, Vosh. I think that's, I think this is embarrassing. I'm just gonna be completely real. This segment of the video is fucking embarrassing. And if I was one of the people, um, if I was one of the people who appeared in this video, I would feel ashamed of myself and embarrassed. Unironically, I would feel bad that I was used like a Pokemon. Him not saying it as much as his followers being like, okay, but he's autistic, he's autistic, he's autistic. It's like, you guys need to recognize what you're doing here. Like, this is not helpful to autistic people. This is really not helpful at all. A lot of white autistic folks, um, in particular, will have fallen into communities on the internet that are really misogynistic, that are really like racist, that are generally just have a lot of shitty attitudes. And they may have a basis that they're operating from, from where they think like that's kind of normal behavior. I've met autistic men in particular who think that, yeah, it's totally normal to say like scuzzy things to women. That's how, that's how men joke around, right? That's how it works. Here's where it starts to get more complicated in my mind. It but that's not even, that's not even unique to autistic people. That's like all, we just had a segment talking about how that's like all of conservative America. Every man on the conservative side of America thinks it's okay to say scuzzy things to women. They actually think that's a good thing. Oh my God, this is, is so stupid. If someone has told you that was inappropriate, I didn't like it, you now have enough information to correct the behavior. So e Your boy Shamoy says they literally said that it's his fans, not Vosh, who said that. Is that true? At the beginning of this, he implied, he said, exp we just watched the segment where he said Vosh does it. Just a couple seconds ago, we just watched the segment where he said that. Maybe this part is talking about the fans, but the part we watched before, we just watched him say that it was Vosh that did it. So maybe that's true. No, back to the beginning of this person. Okay, yeah, for, for Finn, maybe. 
this speaker said that Vosh doesn't say it as much as Vosh's fans. That's fine. But what I was talking about was the part before, which is why I went back and played that again. Even if you didn't have it before, now you do. Now you know. And so for me, the ableism comes into play there when people are like, oh, but they're autistic, they're autistic. You're implying that we can't make those connections, and we absolutely can. To imply that an autistic person can't have that understanding, you are using ableism to enable behavior. <laughs> but let me, let me ease up. I mean, that's true, but people do that all the time. In fact, in this video, the person who made this video admitted to utilizing uh, their race to make money, explicitly, knowingly. I don't, I just, this rings hollow. This rings fucking hollow. Off your boy voice for a second. And get to the gal limb. This one right here is for the gal limb. Keffels, probably one of the newest darlings of the left, due to what I like to call the effect, which is when something tragic happens to a person in a community, a marginalized community especially, and so don't you fucking dare, you bitch! Don't you fucking dare! You fucking bitch! You just had a segment five fucking minutes ago where you talked about taking advantage of people's sympathies to make yourself money! You fucking piece of shit! Holy fucking shit, man! Fuck this guy. Fuck this guy. Fuck you. Begin to rally behind them in order to ward off. Dude, I hate enemy. this shit. I hate this fucking shit so much. I told you I did a huge ass preamble at the beginning of this whole segment. I did a huge long ass ramble about why all this shit bothers me. And now here we fucking go. The whole thing is a big ass. It's all about the money. It's all about that nebula bucks. It's all about that YouTube clicks. It's all about that fucking Patreon cash. But actually, no, it's about racism, guys. Even though I used a bunch of other people to downplay the fact that I admitted in this video to doing exactly what I'm, what I'm accusing others of. And you want to know what's even worse? This motherfucker is getting mad at Keffels and claiming that Keffels played the victim for profit when Keffels got fucking swatted. And this bitch just got one video demonetized and he was willing to cynically play the race card by his own fucking admission. You gotta be fucking kidding me. You gotta be fucking kidding me. Man, that's fucking shitty. Which in this case was Kiwi Farms. And, and let me get serious. For, let's take a moment. I can't believe I'm saying this, right? But we gotta commend Keffels. Cause she went up against a system that is the taint of 4chan. Like all of the sweat and the unctuous grease from the neck beards them of Reddit and our poll alike, it settles into Kiwi Farms. There are form. Our poll? You mean poll? Our poll isn't a thing. That's fucking Reddit. Oh man, this guy, oh, whatever. Dedicated to doxing people. Threads that were literal nooses for some Sudokus. And the intrepid Keffels fought valiantly, endured some of the worst of Kiwi Farms, then emerged like a phoenix into a shiny career in leftist progressive punditing and also posturing, but we'll get to that. Then she piss on it. I talking about like old yellow style, show the leg or piss on it, right? She gone on to make some of the most egregious lies and bigotries we have seen in this space to the point where- Noodles are tasty. Noodle, noodles, noodles. Noodles. And a screenshot of this Jai person. Remember, you motherfuckers in chat, remember how I called out at the beginning of this fucking segment. I said, don't fucking lie, it's about the noodles. It's about the fucking noodles. This is pathetic. 
This shit is sad and you should be ashamed of yourselves. How can you fucking, how can you show yourselves in the light of day making shit ass content like this? It's boring, it's lazy, it's pathetic. You're whining about noodles, you losers. And this is why people watch my channel. Because I don't fucking fraud you and say that I'm like some political savior while I bitch and moan and whine about fucking tweets like this. This is the evidence he's given us so far. Noodles. Noodles. You have to do some fucking crazy mental gymnastics. And instead, you can come watch me fucking tell you the goddamn truth and actually be funny. Actually talk about shit. We talk about fucking fireworks. We talk about, about, about Nick Fuentes and his stupid bullshit. We talk about trans rights. We talk about video games. We talk about fucking movies. With no pretension. None of this fucking crap. None of this high and mighty bullshit. Noodles. Fucking noodles. Fucking noodles. Are you for, are, is this, are you proud of this? Are you proud of this content? All of the people who boosted this crap, is this really what you're proud of? You're proud of, of saying that Keffels had a 9-11 effect and faked victim points, but actually doesn't deserve any good attention and pissed it away. And then your citation is tweets about noodles that you have actually driven yourself crazy with. You know that, oh my God, it's the, it's this, hold on, hold on. Let me just bring this up for you real quick. It's literally this fucking image right here. This fucking image right here, hold on. Where is it? Give me it. Give me it. Give me this. Give me the Mrs. Puff in the padded room. In the SpongeBob padded room. Here it is. This is the one. Right here. This. This is it. This is the entire thing. You made a video. All this crap, all this hemming and hawing and you're fucking Mrs. Puff surrounded by noodles tweets. By the way, this is precisely, this is exactly why I don't, I don't, uh, I don't like do big ass collabs with, uh, with, with all these content creators. This is why I've decided to just make my own space, why I've continually been on my own grind and building my own show. And when I find cool ass people that I like, I, I, I bring them on the show or whatever, but I don't try to fucking uh, uh, pal around with all these stupid clicks. It's why I left the debate sphere, because this is the type of derangement. These people back clap each other, they circle the wagons and they get to the point where they're fucking obsessing over noodle tweets that are incomprehensible to anyone outside of these spheres. This video is, can only preach to the choir. No one on the planet will understand half of these references. It can only preach to the choir. There's no end for this, there's no goal, there's no growth, there's not even a message. This video has fucking nothing but noodles. It got so bad that she had to do this. She got help. She went to rehab because of her drug problem. You fucking idiot. You manipulative fucking piece of shit. Keffels didn't go to rehab because for Twitter addiction. Keffels didn't go to rehab because of uh, noodles. Keffels went to rehab because in the process of getting swatted and harassed for over a year by Kiwi's Farms, she relapsed, it relapsed into drugs. You inhuman fucking ghoul. All of this for noodles. 
Do you really think you're winning? This is a message right here. This message right here, it goes out to the video essayists. Whatever you fucking people want to call yourselves. Do you really think this is a win for you? Do you think this is this is accomplishing your goals? Are you changing the world in the way that you want? Are you even entertaining anybody? Because I don't think you're entertaining everybody. I think you're all fucking miserable. I think you've got little bowls of noodles g circling around your head with little wigglers and you're freaking the fuck out about it and making videos like this while you fucking lie and use identity uh, uh, to your own advantage and you pull this tokenizing embarrassing shit. This Pokemon ass shit. And then you go in here and you say that Keffels went to rehab because you because you think it was because of Noodles tweets. When in the tweet that you show, it's because she had an ongoing addiction to multiple things. Something that Keffels has been open about, by the way, okay? Keffels has a really easy to access video on this. We watched it. Keffels came fucking clean to the entire internet. And you want to know what? Fuck the internet. Fuck all of you. Fuck every last one of you stupid motherfuckers. You idiots sit on your fucking ass and you watch all these content creators and you treat all of them like they're fucking objects. You pick everybody's lives apart. You demand that everybody cater to your stupid needs. You fucking uh, uh, fill your fucking your maw with all the crap. You ask for more, for more, for more, for accountability this, accountability that. And Keffels goes to the point of making videos where she's laying out every single drug that she was addicted to and how it affected her physically and then fucking idiots like this guy come along and make a stupid ass video like this where somehow this the, the thesis of this video the title of this video is when you're racist but queer and then all it is 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 completely misrepresenting what happened to a real person fuck you people i hope this space fucking dies there is nothing there is fucking nothing of value no you know what that's not true there is stuff of value here, and that's what makes it even more sad. Because what is of value is being put aside for this stupid shit. For this garbage. Noodle fucking garbage. So you can make a, a few fucking free bucks. You can make 500 bucks a month off your Patreon when you post a new video about the Debate Bro video essayist Noodle Feud. Pathetic. Fucking pathetic. Fucking pathetic. No, let me. Oh, and if you're fucking tired of this shit, smack subscribe below. Seriously. At least I'm fucking up front with you people. You ask my fans. You ask my fans. I speak clearly to people. I tell you what I fucking am. I'm an entertainer. You're here to learn a little bit and have a whole bunch of fun. And get some catharsis in an era where entertainment sucks, TV fucking sucks, movies fucking suck, but you can watch Demon Mama and have a good time. And guess what? Just so happens I tend to have pretty based political takes as well, but I don't sell, your, sell myself as some sort of fucking high priest of leftism. Start by saying this, right? This is an arc that we need to encourage. We ought to encourage it. When folks are bottling addictions and illnesses, then they get help. We ought to commend this. That being said, getting help in itself is not a atonement. And it is also not a pacifier of the pain. That the and guess what? It's also not a fucking paycheck for you, you grifting piece of shit. It's also not a fucking paycheck for you. Shut the fuck up. Fuck off. You and your obsession about noodles. You've never, you don't even fucking know Keffels. You're just, you just see a fucking buck. You just see a dollar and you're like, oh, let me get that. Let me get that free fucking paycheck for this month. I can put out a video where I imply that Vosh is a pedophile and I say that Keffels made it all up and went to rehab. Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> that the perpetrator inflicted. While you may be a victim of your own traumas and malignments, you cannot now claim victimhood status. That's rich coming from you. In this video, you admitted that you claimed victimhood status knowingly and falsely to make a quick buck. You are not the one to talk on this. You are not the one. With all due respect, shut the fuck up. 
after inflicting pain at scale. Oh, pain. I was pained by the noodle tweets. Who's the pain? Fucking quantify the pain. If you're suffering from noodle tweets, you need to get a life. You need to wake up. It's time to get a new career. If the noodles are fucking hurting you, talk about something else. You can make videos. You got a channel with 105 sub thousand, uh, 105,000 subscribers. Make a video about Diablo 4 like I did. Make a video about Star Wars. Now nah, you're fucking, oh, the pain from noodle tweets. And just keep in mind, just so we're clear, the only things that have been cited against Keffels in this was Keffels saying that, sh that Keffels calling tender queers retarded, which is a little mean, I'll admit. It's a little mean. You guys know I made a whole video denouncing that I don't think it's good to use the arsler, but let's be real. The harm on that is pretty fucking limited, okay? It's pretty fucking limited. And then noodles. That's what you got. You got noodles. Those are the pains. Those are the pains. That's the harm that's been quantified in this video. But many supporters of Keffels warded off criticism in the name of her rehab visit. And whether she is doing it intentionally or not, Keffels is not only using her status. You decide, viewers. Were, were, were the pyramids actually built by aliens? You decide. Do your own research. Shut the fuck up. As a trans woman, a trans woman that was attacked by one of the most vicious platforms on the internet, but also her status as a survivor of substance abuse. And she primped and preened the slithering coils of Medusa. So what the fuck? What the fuck does that even mean? For noodle tweets? What did Keffels do that he, what what did Keffels do? I'm still trying to figure it out. I'm still like working through with like a therapist and psychiatrist to like work through certain things. But I would say as someone who has struggled with mental health for most of her life, I one of my biggest pet peeves is when people use that as an excuse to justify behavior. I grew up with a lot of people around that. Um, like, like I remember I was in this like theater. Keffels explicitly didn't do that, by the way. I just need to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually defend, actually defend Keffels on this one. Keffels didn't do that. In fact, Keffels said, most of you motherfuckers who I've been mad at aren't gonna get an apology. Keffels didn't do that. Nor did most of nor did nor did most of fucking Keffel's friends. Most of the people who knew Keffels were the one Keffel's friends were encouraging her to go to rehab. Keffel's friends were supporting her. Keffels didn't fucking at least to my knowledge. Maybe I'm wrong. Are you legit asking what Keffels did in regards to the noodle? No, I know what happened in the noodle situation. Just so we're clear. I explained this before, but for the viewers who are here, people who might have jumped into this video late, people who didn't catch the beginning of this video, the Noodle Saga. The Noodle Saga, Keffels makes jokes about noodles sometimes. And that joke is a reference to the fact that people got mad because Keffels at one point said that she didn't think it was racist for a white woman to make a noodle cookbook. And then that got telephoned into Keffels is making a racist dog whistle by referencing noodles. Because, let me tell you, because Keffels said, I don't think it's racist that a white lady made a noodle cookbook. Now you can disagree with Keffels. You can think maybe it is racist that, that, the noodle, that a white lady made a noodle cookbook. I don't agree with you. I, I think that that's hyperbole. But if you think that 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 Keffels has done some great harm to the world because she once tweeted that she didn't think that the ra the noodle cookbook was racist and that that makes Keffels a racist you're fucking crazy you're fucking crazy I'm telling you right now get help M I mean it I I'm I'm genuinely serious log off your life will be better if you leave this fucking nightmare this shit is horrible and it's stupid and you are all ruining the space. 
You're ruining all of our time. You're wasting all of our time. And you make yourselves look like fucking assholes. And the sad thing is, a lot of the people involved in this I know are good content creators. I know that Jesse Gender makes good videos. Why would you participate in something so stupid? Why would you, why would you go so hard for such a stupid fucking video? group once and like one of my friends at the time was like really mean to this other girl and she was like i just have anxiety today there was definitely a point where like especially during the pandemic my mental health was affecting the my parents like the people i live with because at a certain point i was in like a heavy depressive episode and like i was just like i essentially had a meltdown and like my parents were going to take me to a hospital to like try to like sort that out that's what really like that was like the moment for me where i was like i need to be on medication and okay what does any of this have to do with keffels so you live with your parents and your parents thought you were depressed and they encouraged you to go to a mental hospital and so you got on medication okay that's very nice the general sense because treatment looks different for everyone it just prevents incidents like that from did you get fucking swatted did you get fucking swatted did you have people smearing your name all across the internet stalking you across the web did you have people showing up at your place and threatening to kill you happening in the future or like if some similar feelings like that pop up you know how to handle it but that doesn't justify or, you know, wash, you know, wash you of any consequences. For what? Notice, for what? They, the enti this entire video has sidestepped the question, what did Keffels actually do? What did Vosh even actually do? They got the clips of Vosh saying some shit. But what harm did either of these people actually do? What harm was done by Keffels specifically, especially in this segment? Did we ever get anything? Well, we didn't. Besides noodles. Besides the fucking noodles. Oh no, the noodles. Because you're preventing that. Oh yeah, he said pain at scale with the citation being tweets about noodles. My man, you need help. You need to log off. You need to consider doing something different for your work. If noodles tweets are causing you pain at scale, that is bad. Going forward, like you still have to take accountability for how you acted in the moment, even if it was out of your control. Like there's like this saying that I really love that like your trauma is not your fault, but it is your responsibility. White women in particular have been known for, and rightfully so, for their loyalty to whiteness above femininity when it serves them, only to return to the label of womanhood when it's time. You're, t you're talking about Keffels and you compare it to just pearly things. A, a, a incel grifter, traditionalist, hyper freak who doesn't believe that women should have the right to vote. Are you insane? Are you insane? And no, you know what? To the viewers of content like this, are you insane? We, if you watch this and you found this compelling, are you crazy? I'm to dawn those, I'm with her pins. With just pearly things as well, I think she's, the way that she's like directly contradicting the things that she says bec by having a YouTube channel and by having her own career and not marrying herself off and having children. I mean, that that fact in itself just kind of proves that it's quite an easy grift. You, you know, you don't you don't even have to live the values that you're putting out there. Like they don't they don't. Also, just pearly things is explicitly straight. She's super straight. She's the most straightest of all the straights. This video is called When You're Racist But Rainbow, and 90% of the video has been about people who aren't queer, and the other amount has been fucking bullshit about noodles. Care. Like, as, the, as long as you're a woman who's agreeing with them, they don't care. So with our videos, you can kind of tell, like, we we put a lot of time into them, we, we consider the things we're going to say, and... You know, it's it's a well sort of rounded video. Whereas if you look at just pearly things as content, 
it's it's terrible she just sits in front of a camera and she just talks crap and sometimes she won't even edit out when she's just sat there like scrolling through her phone you should just sit there for a minute like while women of color mostly black women and femmes as always tirelessly labor to uplift their communities social position yeah who is who is the audience for just pearly things just to let's have a quick refresh here it's not fucking leftists it's not Keffel's fans or Vosh fans. The audience for Just Pearly Things is fucking trad caths, evangelicals, fundamentalists, conservatives, Nazis, fascists, incels. It's not the fucking, what are you fucking talking about? What is this video? Getting back to Lena Dunham, once again, proving herself to be one of the worst people of 2013, <sighs> tweeted that she'd be the first openly straight woman to French kiss the first openly gay NBA player. Anyway, and again, keep in mind that this is the same white woman who harassed Odell Beckham because he refused to engage with someone so absolutely deranged. Well, let's start talking about language. It's many forms, it's meanings, and it's evolution. Yeah, more, more straights notice. Fixation on the straights a bit much, huh? I'm gonna be completely honest. At this point in the video, I'm beginning to suspect a bias on foreign man's part. This is a video that clickbaits about queer people, that capitalizes on the negativity directed at queer people in this current environment, and then mostly obsesses about the behavior of straight people. This video uses queerness as a fucking spear targets queer people and blames queer people for the sins of cishet straight people. I already said het, so whatever, cishet people. It's the reverse of queer baiting. It's like queer hating. A Canadian paper, the Toronto Star. Actively, pe yeah, actively pedo jackets without, with, with absolute crap evidence, a queer person. This entire video, has mostly accused accused the only two queer people that are talked about to any length are are both just slandered without very good evidence. Honestly, I think this is a fucking disgusting video. It's found itself in some internet drama over the concept of race and the verbiage they used. The Ontario Human Rights Commission had settled on a term in use to the reference of people of color racialized people because they accepted that race is a social construct they decided to use the phrase racialized person or racialized group instead of labels that they said were outdated like racial minority visible minority people of color and non-white and so in the feeble-minded attempt at being the onion a reporter at the toronto star Headlined, five other labels for people of color, or non-whites, or racialized people. I mean, surely the commission focused on human rights was being sensitive, just like the Gen Z weirdos. Always being such crybabies and snowflakes, right? Well, readers naturally complained to the news outlet about her tasteless remarks. People hated that she was making fun of it. Well, less she thought that the labels themselves were funny, but the idea that creating new terms that were more inclusive is an exhausting, silly process that seems reductive. After so much backlash, the story she wrote was removed from the website on the same day with a community note that the piece did not meet the company's standards. What does this have to do about being racist and queer? Coincidentally, at the same time, the United States Army was critiqued for not being an imperialist force that assisted in the global domination of the crumbling American empire, but for updating its code of conduct and regulations on preventing discrimination by saying that people who identified as African American or black may also identify as a Negro. Personally, the term Negro exudes the, I had a dream, and well golly gee, better go grab me a soda pop after going to such a great party era. But, you know, I digress. The story was widely reported. People were shocked 
the U.S. Army? Negroes? The policy hoped to provide fair treatment for military personnel and family members without any regard to race, gender identity, religious beliefs, or nationality. By proposing- I'm, I'm confused what the point is here. Have we forgotten that the U.S. military also just within, within the last few years had formally banned trans people from service? To provide an environment free of unlawful discrimination and offensive behavior. It then lists and defines the racial and ethnic group it aims to protect, with the word Negro being the one synonym in a long list of various ways those who fit into the term black may choose to identify. Regardless, they felt the need to publish an apology and recall the verbiage. So here we are in 2023. We've got minorities, non-whites, and people of color. Many of us hear the term diverse being thrown around to encompass organizations, coalitions, or corporate employees' racial makeup. As in, we're so excited to have a diverse voice speaking on this particular issue. But these are terms that have really come to the forefront of discourse and usage only recently, only to be replaced with never <laughs> hipper alternatives. Yes, words mean things, but words have and will continue to be replaced with less offensive or less loaded identifiers that I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I'm unironically completely lost as to how this connects to the when you're racist but rainbow. This feels like a completely different video. And the Words have meanings, okay? Um, a word made people, uh, the, uni the, the United States military made a decision that made some people mad, okay? their predecessors, which is a process known to linguists as prejuration. If a word that refers to something always appear in sentences where that thing is framed negatively, then that term will take on that negativity. Of course. Harvard psychology professor similarly- Yeah, that's where the word, that's where, that's tied to the term pejorative. Yeah, obviously. It's like how, uh, it's like how a uh, queer, uh, Technically, not a, uh, a, a negative word, but in American lexicon for a very long time was literally a slur. And it was embraced and has now been reclaimed. Opined in his book, The Blank Slate, that the euphemism treadmill is a recent drive to adopt the new terms for disadvantaged groups. And it often assumes that the words and attitudes are so inseparable that one can re-engineer people's attitudes by tinkering with the words. People invent new words for emotionally charged reference, but soon the euphemism becomes tainted by association, and a new word must be found, which soon acquires its own connotations, okay. and so on. Even the word minority, the most neutral word label conceivable, referring only to relative numbers, was banned in 2001 by San Diego City Council because it was deemed disparaging to non-whites. The euphemism treadmill shows that concepts, not words, are primary in people's minds. Give a concept a new name, the concept does not become freshened by the new name, at least not for long. Names for minorities will continue to change as long as people have negative attitudes towards them. We will know that they have achieved mutual respect when the names stay put. Labels we use become moot with- well, I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely so confused as to what this ha- Why did- how did we get to here from him accusing Keffels of, uh, of, of, of going, uh, of faking- No, not faking, of grifting off of going to rehab and also saying that Keffels went to rehab because of Twitter while showing evidence to the contrary how do we get to this? For uh, ever evolving socioeconomic, social and racial awareness, which is why some may find things like non-whites to be offensive. 
because it makes white people the default and classifies people of color as, once again, the other or deviation from the perfect. Yeah, which you've also done here using rainbow, which interestingly is a euphemization of queer, which is a euphemization of LGBTQ. You've engaged in this in this video towards queer people. You've, you've in, engaged in the process that you're criticizing towards you, towards people of color. You've used that mechanism against queer people in this video. This whole video has been an as has been a a a a characterization of this. Maybe that's the point. Maybe he's putting his cards on the table here. Maybe that's what it is. Norm. On the other hand, some people may consider minority to be offensive as it implies that people of color or the LGBTQIA plus community or women are a shrinking group <laughs> when we're anything but. The term Oriental has thankfully become Asian, which is now Asian and Pacific Islander. Colored transitioned to Negro, which transitioned into Black and African American. If you're from the land of bald eagles and hellish urban suburbia, but white people, that's something that's remained constant, with only those who fit in it qualifying as white being changed. But that's normal. And depending on where you're from, those meanings will change. Colored is a terribly outdated label in the USA, but still very applicable in South Africa. As Professor Hall Lu adeptly contextualized, the term people of color and colored have drastic meanings depending on who says it, what they're speaking on, and why they said it. Which brings us back to marginalized privileged. Things mean things. Uh, I don't Words know. have power. I don't know if that, um, I don't know if that follows. I don't know if the term changing like white, it, the term has stayed the same, but the meaning has changed. Like for example, Italian people weren't considered white uh, like as early as, as late as the 90s. That's an issue that comes up, I, ironically, I've been watching The Sopranos, and that's an issue that comes up as a part of the storyline of The Sopranos, because it was still a huge issue. Um, and now there are some, like, there's now a push for, uh, like, I mean, for example, look at somebody like Nick Fuentes. Nick Fuentes considers himself white. Fuentes, not a traditionally white last name. He's got, he's got Latin heritage, and yet he considers himself white. And there was that, there was that uh, neo-Nazi shooter who was Hispanic, but he considered himself white. So yeah, white is in and of itself a fucked up construct, but just because that term has stayed the same, I don't know that that necessarily, I don't know that, I don't know how that ties like to variations in terminology from country to country. Like the fact that colored is still used in South Africa, how does that tie to America and the terms that are considered politically correct now? Fuentes is Afro-Cuban. Espen M says, colored doesn't mean the same thing in South Africa either. Yeah, of course, so I just don't get it. People are saying this part might have been written by ChatGPT. I'm not gonna lie, there are parts of this that have come off very, like the wording sounds like the, um, the, the dialogue that is produced by ChatGPT. Like ChatGPT produces sentences in a specific structure, but I don't know if that's actually accurate. It might just be, it might just be by chance. It's definitely very odd. By using that but I just, I just, I don't understand, like, maybe I'm missing something. And if you're in the audience and you understand this point, I don't actually understand what points are being made here. Like, there was a point about the term changing, 
but ultimately meaning an other. But I think that would also be true if we still used the same old words. Like, the function has always been the same to designate an other. We see this all the time. And also, like I said, there is an example of that on the screen, right up here by the little left chain in the top left corner. There's an example of that being used for queer people here. You've used a rainbow instead of the word queer, instead of the word LGBT, because you wanted to get around the algorithms that discriminate against us, that are making us an other. But I don't know that that, like that the words changing are, are the source of the othering. The othering is the source of the of the words changing. Well, people can wield power over anyone they're debating. I mean, after all, how can they be wrong, right? Don't you see that they're a queer person? They know what the hell they're talking about and can therefore be excused when they say something incredibly racist or transphobic. But you did that in this video. You summoned in, you literally summoned in your chosen queer people to say that Vosh's, that Vosh's autism was being used incorrectly. You did that. You did that in this video. So wait, how did this tie? Wait, how the fuck did this tie to what he was just saying? What? Don't you see that they're a queer person? They know what the hell they talking about and can therefore be excused. So when they hold on, how does that tie to talking about a euphemism? Is he saying that queer people is a fake term? That these people aren't queer? Is that what he's trying to imply? Say something incredibly racist or transphobic. We also forget that, that the people behind those platforms are human beings who will fuck up and make mistakes. Um, sometimes, sometimes very egregiously they need to be super held accountable for, but also sometimes in, in smaller ways. Not, I don't want to say benign ways, but smaller ways. And what we will do to marginalized people is we will hold them even more accountable and extrapolate the harm even, like, hyperbolicize the harm. Like you did to Keffels? Like you're fucking doing to Keffels? You mean like you're fucking doing over the noodle tweets, you fucks? Man. Man. The respect is in the fucking toilet. It's in the fucking toilet. There will never be a noodle emote. I would rather, I would rather die than put a noodle emote in my goddamn chat. My respect has just gone down the toilet, through the sewer, into the ocean, to the bottom of the ocean, uh, reborn from bottom feeders eating it and laying their eggs into a fish, swims back up to the surface, uh, gets eaten by a larger fish, turns into a tuna, gets eaten by a tuna fish, the tuna fish gets caught, gets served as sushi, which I ate the other day, and then goes back into the toilet again. Um, in order to be more quick to tear them down in ways that cis dude creators will will n cis white dude creators will not uh have to uh deal with as much you know they'll say something awful and they'll be given a little bit more forgiveness than a marginalized creator who will often will have more hyperbolicized harm and so it's one of those it's one of the quick question do you guys remember a couple years ago some of my og fans a lot of you are new fans we have 760 people watching thanks for being here make sure you're subscribed to the goddamn channel However, those of you who've been here for a while, do you guys remember when uh, half of the internet uh, in this in this space was convinced that I was um, like literally evil? That there were people saying that I was um, that I was transphobic, that I needed to be taken down and shut down because I was doing harm. Do you guys remember when a particular other creator, RGR, made it a a core point of her entire press tour that I was doing damage to trans people and I needed to be stopped and that's why everybody needed to make videos about me and hassle the shit out of me and harass me and my partner. Do you guys remember that? I wonder where any of these people were then. I wonder where any of these people were then.
of those things like I don't think anyone's owed a platform. I think everyone on a platform should be held accountable for if they fuck up. And it's not just like you, you should be allowed to continue to have it. But we also at the same time need to recognize that the standards that we hold for marginalized creators is much higher. And we are much more willing to tear down their platforms than we are for like you're doing right now to Keffels. Like you guys are doing right fucking now to Keffels. You know, I can't even, you know what? They want to pick on Vosh. Vosh is a big, big creator. He's bigger than all these fucking losers. Um, but Keffels is not, okay? Keffels' channel is smaller than all of these people, and they are all fucking ragging on Keffels, saying that she caused pain at scale. Pathetic. It's pathetic. It's fucking pathetic. And you should be ashamed of yourselves. All of you. And yeah, that means you, Jesse Gender. This is fucking shameful. This is fucking shameful. Non-marginalized creators. It's the fact that we don't we don't we don't have the space to fuck up. We don't have the space to be shitty selfish people who tell lies. We're not allowed. We're just we can't. And that's frustrating. And I feel like we won't have like equality isn't gonna be a thing until marginalized people are allowed to also be shitty. But back to labels for a minute. The reason labels continue to fluctuate is because of the ever-evolving positions of those being referred Sorry, to. Sorry, I need to re-listen to that. I was, I was all, stewing. We won't, we don't, we don't, we don't tear down their platforms than we are for non-marginalized creators. It's the fact that we don't, we don't, we don't have the space to fuck up. We don't have the space to be shitty, selfish people who tell lies. We're not allowed. We're just, we can't. And this undermines the entire previous argument of this video. This video is actually self-contradictory. You're saying that queer people don't have the ability to do this while trying to allege that Keffels used her queerness to get away with it. This video is fucking crazy. And this should be a wake-up call. For the love of God, this should be a wake-up call to this video essayist click. I know it won't be, but this, this fucking video right here should be a fucking wake-up call. I mean, the one you're watching with me. Because I don't know how you can fucking eat this shit. How you can scoop this shit into your, into your content maw and walk away and not have any, any conflicting thoughts in your mind. This video is deranged. When you're racist but rainbow, most of the video is about straight people. Then it spends a third of the video shitting on Keffels, saying she does pain, she did damage, she did, she caused pain at scale, lying about what actually happened, citing tweets about noodles, and then you end off the video by saying, oh, queer people can't get away with anything. Yeah. The takeaway from this video is actually, no, you are just the problem. You are the problem. You guys are participating in the thing that hurts queer people by, by faking, magnifying, exaggerating harm, by freaking the fuck out about noodles, by making stupid, dumb, infighting, waste time wasting videos that are hurtful like this, by fucking being insanely cruel to people like Shark. Fucking ridiculous. You, and it's stupid too, because you know what? It would be easy. For them to just fucking roll up and say, I think Shark's an idiot. I think Keffels is an idiot. I think Vosh is an idiot. And that would be it. But that's not it. It's got to be higher, high and mighty. It's got to be virtue signaling. It's got to be uh, this performative, oh, you've done a harm against the community. When the person who fucking published this video admits in the video to being the grifter that they are supposedly complaining about. Insane. Insane. This is insane. And that's frustrating. And I feel like we won't have, like equality isn't gonna be a thing until marginalized people are allowed to also be shitty. But back to labels for a minute. The reason labels continue to fluctuate is because of the ever evolving positions of those being referred to. In many cases, those in the affected groups prefer to label themselves, which is a process called creating an autonym. As they become more socially visible, naturally, Terms can also be debated within a group. Like if an American black person should use black or African American. The groups we choose to identify with and their associated identifiers also provide credibility and open the gates of access to that community. If you're black, you can reclaim the N-word 
And if you're queer, you can reclaim the F slur. And if you're black and queer, well, you understand what I'm saying, right? And if you're neurodivergent, can you reclaim the R slur? I think so. Now, I've also gone out of my way. President Sunday, thank you very much for the raid. All of you, please get in here. This has been a very heated stream. I'm, I, it's a shame you guys missed out the earlier part, but don't worry, I'm gonna give my summary here at the end. Uh, and then we might be actually having a conversation with Soul Bunny, we'll see. I don't know if Soul, Soul Bunny's still here and still up to it. Um, I, made, I made a whole video talking about the R slur. I am neurodivergent. Um, I have ADHD, um, possibly autism. I don't know, I'm not diagnosed with that, but I am diagnosed with ADHD. I have had clinical depression for most of my life. Um, but ADHD is, is a, has completely changed my entire life. I'm a neurodivergent person. Um, and in my video, I talk about how I think you have the right to reclaim it, but reclaiming, reclaiming a word is a matter of using it in a way that is reclamatory, that isn't just used to further marginalize or hurt people. And just so you know, this is a conversation that's been had for all of the words that he has listed here. There were many black people who did not agree with using the word, using the N word, because they believed it to be further marginalizing. That is a valid opinion. That's how I feel. That's why I don't think that you should call other people a slur unless they're okay with it. Like, I don't call other people the F slur or the T slur. I don't call other people the R slur. Even though I do believe I have the right to reclaim those words, I want to use them in a way that's self-referential. I want to use them in a way that's funny, that, 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 that builds people up, if possible, that reclaims those words for our own. It's interesting how that sidestepped. Depending upon the context, reclaim slurs are terms of endearment or used to poke fun at themselves. While in other cases not used by those within that group, they're absolutely derogatory. What makes someone marginalized to fit into the identified group is what sociology calls being in the out group. Those not in the in group, which is whiteness, in the case of Western racial identity, which white people made, are other and push to the fringes of society where they're treated as lesser than or as a means of economic and social fodder. And of course, being marginalized doesn't exempt anyone from having biases. Whether internalized against their own group or externalized through tangible actions upon others. You know, and I get it. We all have flaws. It's totally natural to get- Oh, thank you, 85 to 2 Derek. I already shouted out the President Sunday raid. But uh, again, welcome. Thank you for the raid, President Sunday, and welcome to all of the squids. Please get comfortable. We got a lot more to talk about. Offensive. But the use of a shield damaged our ability to progress as empathetic human beings in collaborations, community organizations, activism, and on our own personal journeys. Shields create rifts where there should be solidarity. We need to encourage dialogue, self-reflection, and less virtue signaling anger for the tiny piece of details. So oh my God. Oh my God. Are you for real, my man? Are you fucking for real? Organizations, activism, and on our own personal journeys. Shields create rifts where there should be solidarity. So we why was it okay for you to, and self-admitted by your own admission in this video, why was it okay for you to lie to people, to utilize people's sympathy and use the race card in your own words to get money for yourself, but somehow you, you need to take the time out of this video to list Vosh, Shark 300, and Keffels alongside uh, J.K. Rowling and fucking Dave Chappelle and then also go on to talk about how they're pieces of shit for some reason. How the fuck does that square?
square that shit. Oh man, this video sucks. This video fucking sucks. We need to encourage dialogue, self-reflection, and less virtue. Hypocrisy, virtue signaling in a nutshell. This whole fucking video is a virtue signal. This is projection. This is straight up. It's, I'm not even kidding you. This is fucking, this is like Darvo shit, okay? It's like reaching that level. The, the segment on Keffels was so fucking bullshit. It was all vague, no receipts whatsoever. And then you spin into this shit where you go at the end, I believe in no virtue signaling that we should let marginalized people make mistakes when a third of your fucking video was devoted to trying to make Keffels look as bad as possible to try and say, and I quote, that Keffels did pain at scale. Fuck that. Fuck that shit. There is one thing I can't stand more than fucking almost anything else on the planet. And that is when somebody fucking lies to your face with a straight face and tries to tell you that they're not doing something. They're slapping you in the face and saying, I'm not doing it. I'm not slapping you in the face. I'm not slapping you in the face. I'm not. This high and mighty, holier than thou, in this video, in this video that we all just fucking sat here and watched, you guys listen to it right here, right now, and this is how he chooses to wrap it, wrap it up? That's crazy. That's, that is messed up. And it's insulting. It's insulting to, it's, it's, an, it should be an insult to everybody who watched this video. It should be an insult to foreign man's audience. It should be an insult to Jesse Gender's audience. You in the audience should be insulted by this shit. Yeah, the video directly segues from Keffels into per just pearly things, implying that they're engaging in similar levels of harm. Notice that they took time to say that Keffels did pain at large, but didn't even say that about pearly things. This video is the summation of terminally online lost in the sauce. And honestly, I'm going to be, I'm going to go one step further and I'm going to say this video is emblematic of the rot that, that has ruined these spaces. The reason why the online left fails so hard, sucks so hard, why there's no bridges, why nobody, why the growth is so slow, why there's a, it's not just because of outside forces. There are definitely, uh, there's a definitely a lot slanted against making lefty content. Don't get me wrong. But the reason why it sucks so much to be in these spaces is because of shit like this. The reason why everybody fucking hates each other is because of this fucking crap right here. This is some, this is summarized in a nutshell. This is, Redcon says this is DJ Mule. This is as bad as the DJ Mule video, in my opinion. I think this video might actually be as bad as the DJ Mule video. It's, it's got higher production quality, kind of. I don't really like the style. But I do think that this is on par, at least, with the DJ Mule video. I think this is a, a pathetic video essay. And I think it's manipulative, and I think it's disgusting. I think it's an attempt to save face, af uh, to save face in case you get called out for your own shit while, 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 while trying to make yourself look like a saint, while doing a fake mea culpa, while shitting on somebody else, and then you wrap up the video by trying to say, oh, we should be, we should be chiller. We should chill out and not be so harsh to queer people. Maybe we should try and, and be more understanding when you do the exact opposite the entire video. She was signaling anger for the tiniest of details. Semantics- Like noodles? Like noodles, man? are famous tactics used by those on the far right and center to antagonize the left, making virtual identities that seem legitimate to derail progressive discourse because they know that people are huge on identity politics and labels. You did that. Keffels hasn't done that. Keffels has never lied about her identity. Keffels has never lied about her struggles. Keffels has been honest about those things. You might not like Keffels, but you are the one. You are the one who did that. You admitted to it. Keffels, 
just tried to fucking live her life and got swatted. You didn't fucking get swatted. You didn't fucking have to run. You didn't have people showing up in person to fucking mess with you. You didn't have people stalking you across the globe, take digging into every single picture. Keffel's dead. You're projecting, my man. You and Jesse Gender and fantastic Mr. Fox and fucking Mooney Cat and all these people who appeared in this video. Now, maybe some of them were taken out of context. To be fair, Mooney Cat seems to only have commented on totally unrelated things. So maybe I shouldn't include Mooney Cat in that. But that's what you're doing. And it's something that people have been calling other leftists out for doing online as well. So, while we hold ourselves and each other accountable, we should understand how marginalized identities have historically interacted and how people are unique and multifaceted, which sometimes means taking a step back. Not every marginalized person in their community. Which you didn't do. You chose to make this shitty video. You could have just not made this video. You have a successful channel. You could have made a video on any other topic, but instead you chose to do this one. Instead, you chose to fucking kick at Keffels more. Why? Why? Is it because it would make you money? Is it because this video has 200,000 views? Is this even better than his other videos? Was this even a, a wise financial decision? Oh, it is. It's blowing out his other videos. Here, look at his other videos. This one has 200,000 views. It took his other video four months to get there. So there you have it. He chose to go against the message of this video, spit in your fucking face right now, He's spitting in your face, because this video is going to make him some money. This video is going to make him some fucking money. Is fit to represent the entire group or speak on its behalf, because people aren't monoliths. And people shouldn't use their labels as a means of deflection. After all, a platform is not a right, it's a privilege. And it comes with a responsibility that not everybody can handle. And you know what else people can't handle? The truth. Which, as a political- Bro. Come the fuck on, man. Shut the f- Come the fuck on. Political scientist is of the utmost important to me, so- Alright, now it's an ad read. Fuck that. Absolutely fuck that. I'm, I'm ending it. I didn't know it was an ad read. He didn't say it was an ad read yet, you fuckers. Some of you have watched this already, you assholes. I haven't. Shut the fuck up. Shut, don't, don't fucking test me. I'm pissed off at this video. Man, this video was bad. So the video is called When You're Racist But Rainbow. It... It plays equivalences between Vosh and Keffels and Dave Chappelle and J.K. Rowling. Two people, Jake, let's just be, let's be clear here. Dave Chappelle uses his comedy specials to, to do explicit apologia for TERFs to shit on trans people and spread misinformation about trans people. Even if you fucking hate Vosh, those two people aren't even in the same fucking boat. This video goes out of its way to, to try and frame Keffels and Vosh as some kind of debate bros. Don't forget that. He brought that up too. Debate bros as some kind of special harm. And yet most of this video is incoherent rambling about fucking cishet people doing fucking bullshit. All of these shitty cishet people doing crap. And then also... He slips in there himself admitting to fucking grifting his own audience using race. Manipulating the actually genuinely held political views of his audience. Only to twist that into a fake mea culpa that can be projected onto Keffels and made it seem as if Keffels did something wrong. I hate this video. This video is emblematic of the rot that's in these spaces. And I have lost respect for literally everyone involved in this video. I think it's pathetic. I think it's blatant grifting. It's incredibly clear. Let's just take a moment here so I can verify that. This video alone was published, what, uh, 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 nine days ago. 
and in nine days it's gotten almost 200,000 views. That's more than any other video that he's had, okay? It took a month for his last video to reach that many views. It took over a month for his previous video to that, and it didn't even get that many views. Most of his videos do not have this many views. This one did. From a guy who admits uh, uh, gleefully to having grifted his own audience to make a buck. Man, that is, that is sad. This is what, this is the standards and then the message at the end to be a virtue signal about how we should uh, we should maybe spend less time attacking marginalized people when the entire video is going out of its way to attack a marginalized person based on deranged fantasies about noodles. There is, there are all kinds of reasons to be angry about certain things that Keffels has said and done. There are definitely all kinds of reasons to be angry and frustrated about Vosh. I know, God knows I've criticized Vosh and argued with Vosh. Um, but this was trash. This didn't even begin. And this is a video essay. Somebody edited this shit. Somebody fucking edited this shit and decided and then at the end said, we should spend less time hyper fixating on the, on the mistakes of marginalized people and instead talk about more serious issues. You mean like you fucking didn't? You mean like you fucking didn't do? Man, this is sad. It's been a long time since the last time I talked about a drama like this. It's been a while. I believe the last major time that I weighed in on a drama like an actual intercommunity drama was my uh, sky burial for the online left. Do you guys remember that? Which was once again, an absolutely deranged dogpiling of Keffels was one of the main parts about it. Maybe, I, I, I don't know, maybe I did. I don't know, has there been another time? Regardless, it's been a very long time. Despite the fact that I do Drama Mama videos, which aren't about intercommunity drama, mind you, my Drama Mama videos are not about that. Oh wait, no wait, I did, I did cover the uh, not so erudite President Sunday beef. Though that's a little bit of a different community, cause like, not so erudite is like a, a centrist liberal. I don't know, whatever. I guess I did do that. I can cop to that. I did do that. Oh, did I talk about the Hogwarts shit? No, that was the, the Sky Burial, was about the Hogwarts shit. Which was also fucking crap. I went hard on foreign. I think I was fair to go hard on foreign. If this is the showing of his videos, I don't have any reason to trust his other videos. Why would I trust somebody who tried to do, who did a fake out mea culpa, admits to grifting his own audience based on uh, manipulating their political views and then tries to tries to make a video that insults other people about that when they didn't do that thing. Vosh didn't do that thing and Keffels didn't do that thing. He did that thing and he tried to spin it by 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 framing his admission as like a look see I admit it now you see Keffels isn't admitting it it's 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 literally projection it's making the implication that Keffels did something he's going everybody does this you know why won't Keffels admit to it but of course not everybody does that no actually not everybody fucking grifts and and he even admitted that he even said that his grift was explicitly going to hurt other people in the future and then without even a moment's hesitation jumped into attack on Keffels. Maybe this video, maybe this video should have been exactly the same but remove everything about Shark and Vosh and Keffels and just have it be a video where he admits that he did things wrong and don't fucking monetize the video. Say, I grifted you guys. I misled you guys. Here, let me talk about how it's possible for people to mislead using idpol. Then I would have had some respect, but I don't trust this person. I don't trust foreign man. Of course I'm gonna go hard on him. Even he admits he hurt the likelihood of other marginalized people getting their, getting their, their genuine complaints heard.
That, that segment on Keffels was so mean-spirited. It was beyond mean-spirited. It was misleading. This whole video was a giant manipulation to get in a personal attack at Keffels. And all he had was fucking noodles and a tweet of Keffels saying that, that, that she thinks tender queers are retarded. Rarely have I seen Demon Mama this mad. This shit really makes me mad. It makes me mad because it's like the opposite of everything that I do. And it makes me, it makes me feel like a fucking idiot for ever getting involved in these stupid spaces. Um, I spend, I go out of my way. You guys know I fucking spend way too much time preambling in every video, explaining myself. I've spent all this time, uh, I spend so much time going out of the way to be like, I'm an entertainer. Keep that in mind. You know, I'm I'm not a I'm not an educator. I'm not a doctor. I don't cite any bullshit degrees. I don't fucking do any of that shit. I'm just a streamer. And then this shit happens. And this is like the space that I share with people. Puerto Rican musician says, I'm pretty sure you burned the bridge with the black YouTube community. Really? Why would you say that? Why would you say that? Is that is that your genuine belief? Because I thought this video was bad? I think this video is bad. I know for a fact. At least I sh I I I I believe that the black YouTube community, which I believe I don't believe this is representative of. This is one uh, this video is one 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 video from one 100,000 subscriber channel. I don't think this guy is representative. But I like to believe that the black YouTube community will also see the problems with this video. Maybe I'm wrong. But if, um, if that's the case, there's no hope for these spaces. If me criticizing this shit-ass, manipulative, uh, hypocritical video is enough to burn the bridge with the black YouTube community, there's no hope for this space whatsoever. There's no hope for any of us. This space is done and I'm, 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 I'm fucking, there's no reason. There's no fucking reason to even bother.